We're ready to go. All right. The appointed hour is 6.30 having been reached. I welcome everybody to this meeting of the Amherst Zoning Board of Appeals. My name is Steve Judge. As chair of the Amherst Zoning Board of Appeals, I call this meeting to order. Pursuant to Gover Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, General Laws Chapter 30A, Section 18, and the governor's March 15th, 2020 order, imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. This public hearing of the Town of Amherst Zoning Board of Appeals is being conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but the public can listen to the proceedings by clicking a link on the town's webpage. In accordance with the provisions of Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 40A and Article 10, special permit granting authority of the Amherst zoning bylaw. This public meeting has been duly advertised and notice thereof has been posted and mailed to parties at interest. We will begin with the roll call of the regular members of the ZBA who have been impaneled for consideration of, of the items tonight and then of our associate members. I'm Steve Judge and I'm here. Mr. Langsdale? Here. Ms. O'Meara? Here. Ms. Parks? Here. Mr. Maxfield? Here. Ms. Waldman? Mr. Barrick? Mr. Greeny? Here. Mr. Meadows? Here. Also in attendance is Maureen Pollock Planner um, and Dave Wasevich, Senior Building Inspector. Is there anybody else from the staff that I did not recognize, Maureen? I don't believe so, no. That's it. Okay. The Zoning Board is a quasi-judicial body that operates under the authority of Chapter 48 of the General Laws of the Commonwealth for the purpose of promoting the health, safety, convenience, and general welfare of the inhabitants of the town of Amherst. One of the most important elements of the Amherst Zoning Bylaw is Section 10.38. Specific findings from this section must be made for all of our decisions. All hearings and meetings are open to the public and are recorded by town staff. The procedure is as follows. The petitioner, the petitioner presents the application to the board during the hearing, after which the board will ask questions for clarification or additional information. After the board has completed its question, the board will seek public input. The public speaks with the permission of the chair. If a member of the public wishes to speak, they should so indicate by using the raised hand function on their screen. The chair, with the assistance of the staff, will call upon people wishing to speak. When you are recognized, present your name and address to the board for the record. All questions and comments must be addressed to the board. The board will normally hold public hearings where information about the project and input of the public is gathered, followed by public meetings for each. The public meeting portion is when the board deliberates and is generally not an opportunity for public comment. If the board feels it has enough information and time, it will decide upon the applications tonight. Each petition is heard by the board as distinct and evaluated on its own merit, and the board is not ruled by precedent. Statutorily, for a special permit, the board has 90 days from the close of the hearing to follow a decision. For a variance, the board has 100 days from the date of the filing to, uh, of the request for the variance to file the decision. No decision is final until the written decision is signed by the sitting board members and is filed in the town clerk's office. Once the decision is filed with the town clerk, there is a 20 day, 20 day appeal period for an aggrieved party to contest the decision with the relevant judicial body in superior court. After the appeal period, the permit must be recorded at the registry of deeds to take effect. Amherst Media will not be broadcasting tonight's hearing live. However, check their website for information on when it will be rebroadcast, or you, you can view a recording of this meeting on the town's YouTube channel. Tonight, we have the following agenda public meeting on ZBA 2021-08, Greg Stutzman for review and approval of the fence layout pursuant to condition two from the approved special permit ZBA FY 2021-04 at 1325 Southeast Street. Map 23D parcel 12, outlying RO residential, outlying residence RO zoning district. ZBA 2021-07, Breck Group Amherst, Massachusetts LP, Aspen Heights Residential Community. 
for the review of the proposed design and location of the monument sign and proposed lease sign pursuant to conditions 37 and 80 of the approved special permit ZBA FY 2019-17 at 408 Northampton Road, map parcel 13D51, Professional and Research Park, PRP Zoning District, and ZBA FY 2021-09, Fort River Solar 2, LLC, for the review and approval of the new solar pho photovoltaic installation, owner or operator's management plan, an operation and management plan pursuant to condition 14 from the approved special permit, ZBA FY 201909, at 191 West Pomeroy Lane, map 19D, parcel 10, flood prone conservancy, FPC, neighborhood residents, RN, and outlying residents, RO, zoning district. Public hearings on ZBA FY 2021-03, Pioneer Property Services, LLC, request a special permit to convert the existing detached garage to a residential unit, which will increase the number of residential units, converted dwellings from one to two under sections 3.324, 9.22, and 10.38 of the zoning bylaw. Located at 275 East Pleasant Street, map 11B, parcel 63, Neighborhood Residence RN Zoning District, continued from October 1st, 2020. ZBA FY 2020-42 Fay Crosby, request a special permit to allow a non-owner occupied duplex under sections 3.3211 and 10.38 of the zoning bylaw, located at 65 High Street, map 14B, parcel 90, General Residence RG Zoning District, continued from September 3rd, 2020. And ZBA FY 2021-06, Backyard ADUs, request a special permit to allow a supplement detached dwelling, supplemental detached dwelling unit as an accessory to a one family detached dwelling under sections 5.0111 and 10.38 of the zoning bylaw. Located at 34 Baker Street, map 13D, parcel 36, parcel 46, neighborhood residents RN zoning district. After that, we will have a general public comment period that we always have for the public to comment on matters that were not before the uh, board tonight. So there are a couple items on this agenda that I think we can dispose of quickly. And I'd like to do that by, and then and move some of them just to a later meeting as they've been requested. And then we'll have, uh, we won't have to jump around. We can just get some things out of the way um, quickly. For example, um, uh, ZBA 2020-42, the Faye Crosby request at uh, 65 High Street. She has requested that we move this, um, we continue the, this hearing until March. And it seems to me that um, she's, she's not, for a host of reasons, she's not prepared to go forward at this point in time, but doesn't wanna lose the opportunity to do that. So it seems to me that that would be one we could uh, move quickly on and dispose of and move to March. Now we need a, a date certain for that, don't we, Maureen? Uh, yes. Uh, so, so let me um, let me look that up. So uh, it would either be the second or fourth Tuesday, um, which would be the eleventh or the eighteenth. So the second Thursday is the eleventh. Correct. So let's move it to the, let's do the 11th. Okay. And uh, the, the, the members that uh, paneled the uh, September 3rd public hearing for this application was, is uh, Steve Judge, Keith Langsdale, Tammy Parks, Dylan Maxfield, and Craig Meadows. Yes. So they would so, be, yeah. Yep, so we should have a roll call vote to do that, right? Yep. So I move we uh, continue this until March 11th. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Mr. Maxfield seconds it. Uh, is there any discussion on the motion to move to continue the, the hearing? <clears throat> yes. Yes, Mr. Langsdale. Uh, I, this is just procedural. Um, yep. By taking this on first, we're opening the public hearing. 
do they then go back to open the public meeting? We have to close the public hearing and go back to the meeting or what? I don't, that is a public, that is a public meeting item. I think we'd probably have to do that. Um, we'd have to take, we would have to go and close this public hearing and then we'd have to open it up for the other matters, which seems to be just a form, would that, that would close out the whole meeting, wouldn't it? Um, I, I believe that you could open the public hearing now, uh, close then, it and then reopen well, or it. Not, or can we suspend it? We can suspend or, it. Sure, yeah. or you could uh, yeah. be you know, conservative and, and start with the public meetings. With all due respect, I think it'd be simpler just to start with the public meeting and and um, all right. Through. That's fine. But technically, it, I, I believe, uh, Mr. Chair, that the uh, either we could suspend either it or is um, it, there is no wrong answer. Yeah, we could suspend it. Um, so I'm we'll put this in abeyance and move to the um, public meeting portion. The first item is FY 2021. Mr. Sutzman's um, application at um, 1325 Southeast Street. Um, this item has been, um, we, have not, we have not completed the review of this item. The staff hasn't, or the, the members have not signed the decision yet. And the decision hasn't been, fi has been uh, filed. So it's not final until it's filed. And so um, I think, for this item, it doesn't make sense that we try to um, hear about a uh, take a position on an on an adjustment to a decision that hasn't been been made yet. It's not hasn't been officially made. So I think we should move this one to our next meeting on December 10th. Have you talked to the applicant, Maureen? Um, yeah. Uh, well, I I um, I sent an email correspondence to the applicant, uh, Greg Stutzman, earlier today, uh, apologizing that the decision hasn't been finalized um, in time of this meeting. So it would uh, it would make sense for the board to um, just uh, postpone the review of the fence uh, elevation provided uh, to when the decision will be um, signed and filed with the town clerk. So I would actually suggest to the ZB chair to um, not continue this to a date certain. It's just a public meeting. And so when the decision is signed and filed with the town clerk. Uh, we can put it on the agenda. We can put it on the agenda. So we only okay. need uh, you know, 48 hours advance notice uh, to add it, although we like to. Like to give as much as possible. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. Okay. Um, so I would move that we, con that we continue this until the, uh, the first meeting after which the um, application has been signed and filed. Do I have a second? Thank Mr. Maxfield, do I have, uh, is there any discussion? If not, call the roll. On this, it's Mr. Uh, J uh, Judge Langsdale, O'Meara, Parks, and Maxfield. So I vote aye, Mr. Langsdale. Aye. Ms. O'Meara. Aye. Ms. Parks. Aye. Mr. Maxfield. Aye. Great, it's taken care of. Next item on the public meeting is uh, the Breck Group Amherst LP, Aspen Heights Residential Community at 408 Northampton Road, dealing with uh, signs, a proposed uh, monuments, a monument sign and its proposed lease sign. Um, we have received from them um, an applicant submission, a memo from Dodd Creative Group, a plan set for the monument sign dated November 4th, a plan sent for the set for the leasing center sign dated September 28th. Town staff submission, the project application report dated November 6, 2020, ZBA uh, FY 2019 17 approved special permit decision. A uh, special permit decision from 2020-08, approved meeting summary, 20, FY 2020-31, approved meeting summary, this, um, and that's it in terms of, in terms of submissions, I think. 
Is there anything else? That's it. Um, who is who is representing the applicant in this matter? Gary Robinson and Bob Cardwell, Doug Creative Group. Good. Um, so repeat your names for the record again, so that we can um, understand Gary, and put it in the record. Robinson. Yep. Bob Cardwell. And where is Dodd Creative located? We're in Dallas, Texas. Okay. So uh, please proceed with the with your uh, narrative. All right. So uh, we have uh, a monument sign is the first thing of. Uh, it was proposed originally and approved by the ZBA. Uh, there was some, I think, uh, measurement. Uh, discrepancies in the uh, original proposal and what we've sent back uh, to get reapproved is the correct measurements. Uh, there was in the beginning, I think the Brex group just uh, presented it as a rendering on their drawings uh, that went through. I'm not sure of all the documents that were that they provided, but uh, it kind of came up at one point whenever we were discussing uh, the location of the monument with the city. And uh, they uh, recommended that we go back through ZBA to make sure that it's approved. That's concerning the monument plan, um, monument sign. And please also discuss the lease sign. Okay, so on the lease sign, it's it's back at the leasing center, back towards the back of the property. That is a, a, a typical sign that we do uh, for these apartment communities. We do a lot of work for Aspen Heights and uh, their contractors. And uh, the leasing sign is just, you know, goes over the, uh, the canopy that goes into the uh, leasing center. It just uh, identifies the space. It's a non-illuminated sign. It doesn't face any major roads. Like I said, it's back at the back of the property. Um, you can kind of see there's a little arrow there that draws down uh, to it. And you can see uh, uh, the main road, uh, what is that, uh, Northampton uh, out there to the uh, right-hand side. So I think whenever this was originally went through the ZBA uh, back in a couple of years back uh, with the Brex group, that sign was not included in uh, in what they proposed to the city. So we're we're trying to propose that now to see if we can get approval uh, to move forward with permitting and everything on that sign. Okay. The uh, monument sign. Are you anything else to provide to us before I we open it up for questions from the board? No, I, I think we're no, like the main monument okay. still in, the main monument still in the same location that it originally was. We haven't moved it or anything. It's just there was some minor design changes over the time that just affected the measurements. Uh, it, it probably didn't change any of the square footage. It just the, the drawing that was provided was just hadn't been updated to a more current design. So the, what I'm looking at on my screen is that the the former in green is the former monument sign and it's um was in one place and you're proposing that it move to the former monument was green you're proposing that it be that it would be in blue so it's Can it looks like the that? old plan was incorrect or whether it's incorrect or not you would like to have it in a different place than as it was approved in the um, in the plan as approved well Excuse me, the the green uh, former monument spot is blue mass off, so I can hear you a little bit better. I'll put mine on. If you could return to the the monument uh, papers, uh, that would be helpful. So can we go back? Yeah, go back a couple of pages. I didn't want to stop. Um, thank you. Now that shows. Um, I think I had sent, I do believe that I had sent an updated uh, set of drawings um, that removed the green, blue, and red indicators and simply isolated in the newer documents the green location as our current, um, as the current and the original location desired. Um, so our second choice, we had removed second choice uh, from that. So the blue one is no longer uh, 
an option in our current uh, designs, which I believe I had uploaded or had emailed. And uh, the first choice monument spot remains our first our first choice. Yeah, so, so to add on to what Bob's saying, is that green location was the original spot for the monument. It's got a 20 foot setback. We, you know, there's a, a utility easement through there. So as a second op option, that was kind of talking with the client, if we couldn't go in that utility easement area, would that second location be okay? And the client, I think we had some prior meetings with the city and everything, and we can be in that utility easement if we get approval from uh, uh, the utilities that are there, which we have. So the secondary location is not, really shouldn't even be in this. Like Bob said, I, we think we sent some uh, additional paperwork that, that took that out and probably just didn't get updated. If you can give me a minute, I can um, share the what was emailed me uh, earlier. Sorry, sorry for the confusion. Okay, so I'm opening up what was emailed to me on Tuesday um, of, of this week. So okay. bear with me. Um, hold on a second. Yes, that's, that's that's the latest one. Thank you. Thank you, Maureen. Mm -hmm. So this is the original location that the monument was going to be at. Uh, again, there was just the placement was never a, a question. Uh, you know, after we got approved to go on through the utility easements, the, the question was that the design of the sign had changed just a little bit, and, and, and just with the what was originally submitted was an old design drawing uh, for that sign. Aspen has kind of updated their design. It has the same basic look, just some of the proportions changed a little bit in the, uh, the structure. So you're asking us the, um, the question before the board then, I think Maureen is to approve the design of the monument sign. And then secondly, to approve the placement and the design of the leasing sign. So yep. is that yep. correct? That is correct. So if you okay. refer, uh, it, you could specifically refer to condition 37, which is yep. uh, included in the project application report. Um, let's see here, I can pull that up myself. Um, Okay, so I'll, I'll that, sorry. There it is. So uh, 30, condition 37 states, building design colors and architectural features shall match the approved elevation drawings and presentation slides uh, dated April 18th, 2019 and prepared by Grant Architects and KSBA Architects LLC. And so, um, and then additionally, uh, condition 80 states, the monument sign shall be constructed and installed meeting the design found on the approved site plan dated April 18th, 2019, prepared by the Berkshire Design Group. The design shall be in compliance with article 8.2 of the zoning bylaw. The applicant shall return to the zoning board of appeals at a public meeting for review of the of the sign prior to the issuance of the build of a building permit. All necessary building per permits shall be required prior to the sign being installed. Um, so, uh, after uh, review of uh, the zoning bylaw section uh, eight point two three zero point one, um, the uh, the monument sign as proposed, which is uh, 60 square feet in area and six feet in height meets the zoning bylaw um, under uh, section 8.230.1. And, um, and then uh, the board needs to uh, make the finding that this uh, does match 
um, the design, uh, the building design colors and architectural features. Um, so um, I believe, hold on a second. If we go back up. Do, 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 do. Specifically shows the building interior designs. I didn't know that that was a question. Okay. Okay. There we go. Yeah, and uh, so, uh, so your specific re review is under um, is regarding uh, condition thirty seven and eighty, and uh, it does appear that it meets the design and architectural feature of, of the uh, of the overall project, and and both signs as presented meet the dimensional requirements for signage under the zoning bylaw. And the, the monument sign was included in the. There was a monument sign included in the original uh, decision releasing sign is new. So I think we should, if people have any questions, comments about the monument sign. Any board member? I do. Yes, Mr. Langsdale. Um, how is this sign to be uh, illuminated? Uh, it's LED illuminated. All the, uh, the channel letters uh, that are on there are, are halo lit. So not the, the direct face of the letter does not light. It, it has a, a light that kind of goes around the perimeter of the letters. Oh, I'm sorry, Bob, just correcting me. These are facelit channel letters. Sorry, I was thinking about another Aspen project that we're working on currently. So um, it's still utilizing LEDs, however. <laughs> yeah, so LED illuminated, uh, the, the lighting comes through the face of the letters. Uh, the background doesn't illuminate just the letters themselves. Aspen Heights. Any other additional questions? And, uh, and it appears that the leasing center ID sign is non illuminated. Is that correct? Yep. That's correct. It's non illuminated. And it's 21 inches. This is how this sign is 21 inches high. Is that correct? The letters. Yeah, yep, the letters. The letters, yes, including the very top of the leaf. The letters are actually 18 inches. Uh, if you add yeah. a little stem on the leaf, it goes to 21. 21. And then we have a mounting, uh, mounting raceway that the letters yep. and the are attached to, so it takes it to 25. But the act part of the sign is 21. Any additional questions or comments from board members? All right. Um, we have to make a fine, we have to um, approve the, we well, don't have to, I mean, the question before the board is whether we approve the two signs, uh, monument sign and the lease sign. Um, do it, is, I move that we approve the, the monument sign as proposed in the um, document submitted to us today and the lease sign as proposed. Do I have a second? Second. Mr. Maxfield, is there any discussion? No discussion. Uh, vote occurs on the, um, the motion. And in this, it is uh, the regular members. So um, I vote aye. Ms. Parks? Aye. Mr. Maxfield? Aye. Ms. O'Meara? Aye. Mr. Langsdale? All right. Motion carries five nothing to Giannis. Um, the signs are approved. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate no. your time. We will Thank you. Training. Appreciate it. Have a good evening. Um, that the next order of business is Fort uh, ZBA FY 2021, Fort River Solar 2 LLC. Uh, located at 191 Pomeroy Lane. Um, what we've received on that has been, let me go home. 
we've received um, an email from Mr. Reedy on November 6th detailing the plan, the um, operating and ma maintenance as well as management plan. Uh, there would, he would have it. Uh, it also describes some changes to the prop to the project. We've received um, a aerial uh, mock-up of the changes in equipment pad and existing from the existing equipment pad and various um, and sundry cut sheets from the um, applicant regarding the, I think it's a battery storage facility um, and also a description of the difference in the chain in the uh, solar panels. And um, we've received, a, and we, we have compiled special permits from the past in June um, 19th, June of 2019, as well as um, we received today the, op, the management plan, the approved management plan, and the um, approved operating and maintenance plan. This, the issue before us today at this, on this, issue, on this uh, application is that the building commissioner has looked at the um, changes to the site and deemed them as not substantial. And it's because, it, I mean, there are things like they're more efficient at solar collectors and there's a bigger battery storage area. But what is, uh, what is um, I think, uh, significant is the change in ownership or operator of the, of the, uh, the, the solar farm. And so that's the issue before us today, as I understand it. So um, who's representing the, the applicant? Mr. Hi, Mr. Chairman. Hello, Mr. I'm Reedy, attorney with Bacon Wilson in Amherst. All right, please run us through what you would, um, what you're proposing. Sure, I'll take it away. Uh, first, good evening. Good to see everybody. I hope everybody's doing well. Um, as I said, for the record, Tom Reedy, attorney with Bacon Wilson in Amherst here on behalf of Fort River Solar 2 LLC. And so as you likely realize by now, 191 West Pomeroy Lane is the old Hickory Ridge golf course in town. Uh, it was approved, applied, applied golf Hickory brought it through the approval process and then effectively sold their assets um, to Fort River Solar 2. So Fort River Solar 2 is going to be the project company. They're going to be the company that is ultimately going to be building and operating this array. Um, there is an agreement for that operating entity to be, they're called AMP Energy, AMP Development. Um, they've got uh, a portfolio in, in Massachusetts. I think they were actually proposing another array in Amherst. Uh, I personally have worked with them. I'm, I'm very impressed with them. They're incredibly responsive, um, very professional, and they know their stuff. So as part of that transaction, we just have to clean up some things, you know, notably having the permit transferred, transferred from Applied Golf Hickory to Fort River Solar 2 LLC. Um, there were a couple of things that the building commissioner deemed as not substantial. Everything's staying within the fence line. The array is just changing a bit from a fixed tilt to a single axis tracker system. Um, we're adding battery storage. The, the DC, the nameplate capacity is increasing. Um, the management plan was updated to effectively be the exact same thing that was approved, except it was updated to show Fort River Solar 2 as uh, the owner. And then the operation and maintenance plan um, is substantively the same as it comes to uh, electrical and technical maintenance and inspection schedule and the property maintenance and inspection schedule. So if you look at it, it was proposed by Direct Energy Solar the, the first page of that approved operation and maintenance plan identifies who and the panels, that's going to change. And we're happy to submit that one page of change to the building department prior to receipt of a building permit. Um, but otherwise, like the inspection and the maintenance schedule, that's all going to be the same. Um, so however the board wants to deal with it, you know, substantively, like I said, it's, it's the same except for some of the um, the, the panel information, the owner information, et cetera. Um, otherwise, I'm happy to answer any questions that you have about the, the project, the transfer, or anything like that. 
So the, the one change in the operation and ma maintenance plan is direct solar is removed and Fort Rivers will be Fort River solar too. Yep. Yeah. And then, okay. you know, technically it goes to 6.212 megawatts. And then when you go to that first page, the photovoltaic system specification will change because they're just more efficient panels. Now these are not to get into too much detail, but these are 345s. I think they're using like 440s. So that's the a wattage that these modules mm -hmm. can take, the panels can take. And they're, they're just getting more efficient over time when this project was originally designed a couple of years ago. This was the technology. Now the technology has approved. So you'll see that this page changes, but then the balance of the pages for the, the actual inspection schedule, that won't change. And the last question I have, Mr. Reedy, is the... Um... Was there battery? I, I remind me. Were there batteries on the site before? I don't the believe batteries so. Are new, right? The batteries. That's, new. Aren't That's why the pads are there. Correct. There was an equipment pad before, I believe, for an inverter, and now the pad is large enough for the battery storage and the inverter. Right. And the one question there is, um, in the past when we've done this, the fire department has to be able, it has to be informed of the the battery, and you have to work with them. And you can't build it without the fire department's approval, but at some point you have to um, reach out to them yeah and make I, their, I, either their approval or um their comments yeah that, that is correct so the the applicant would need as part of the building permit process would need to go um to have it reviewed by the inspection services and any other applicable department such as uh the fire pre prevention officer mike roy okay are there questions from the board regarding this the um, application. All right, um, we're going to need a vote on, a vote on this. So um, on this item, we have the same panel. Um, no, Mr. Meadows will be sitting in on this panel, um, and Miss O'Meara will not be sitting in. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. No, I'm no. sorry. That's I got the wrong one here. Thank you. Just a second. That was on that other application. That was on the other agenda. The Fort River is it's the it's the the regular members, right, Maureen? Yep. Yep. So the motion is to approve the um, the change listing of the change of ownership and uh, of the the project. Do I have a second? Second. Miss O'Meara seconds. Um, the roll call. Is there a discussion on the motion? If not. Uh, We'll call the roll. I vote aye. Ms. O'Meara? Aye. Ms. Parks? Aye. Mr. Langsdale? Aye. Mr. Maxfield? Aye. Motion is uh, vote is unanimous. The motion carries. All right. So much, Thank you very everybody. much. Take you care. Back. See ya. The next order of business is to um, is a public hearing. Um, and what I'd like to do is to open the public hearing and dispose of um, ZBA 2020-42 at 65 High Street. As we said before, um, the applicant has written, we've received an email from the applicant um, requesting that it be moved to a later date in March. Um, we've also received, um, uh, and I think that's, because you can't be here until then. Um, and there's some there's reasons stated in her uh, email why she can't be here. So um, I have no problem with that. And we picked the date of March 11th to continue this until that time. And that gives her a chance to work with the um, city, the town folks um, to try to figure this out, as well as there's a potential, um, maybe a sale or something else that she's working on. Um, is, so I move that we continue this till March 11th. Um, is there a second? Second. second? Is there a discussion? All right, if there's no discussion, uh, this is the roll call vote. And on this, if I got it right, we, this was the one where Mr. Meadows is sitting in yes. and Ms. O'Meara is not. So um, <coughs> roll call vote is required. I vote aye. Mr. Langsdale? Aye. Ms. Parks? Aye. Mr. Maxfield? Aye. Mr. Meadows? Aye. 
The vote's unanimous and the motion carries to move the um, item to March 11th, 2021. Uh, the next order of business is Pioneer Property Services, LLC. Right here, what is there on the screen? Requesting a special permit to convert an existing detached garage to a residential unit, which will increase the number of residential units from one to two under sections 3.324, 9.22, and 10.38 of the zoning bylaw, located at 275 East Pleasant Street. This is continued from October 1st. Um, and this is also Mr. Uh, Meadows is serving on this panel and Ms. O'Meara is not. So I'd like to go through what we have received regarding this uh, application since our October 1st meeting. Uh, the applicant has submitted a request to continue the public hearing until a date certain in January. Uh, the planning board report to the, we've received a planning board report on the, to the town meeting a warrant articles 57 and 58 dated May 1st, 1986, that deals specifically with, as we do in section 3.3241. Uh, public comments, we've received comments from Mr. Uh, submitted prior to the October 1st um, meeting. There were five comments subsequent, in which we mentioned at that time. Subsequent to that, we've received public comments from Susan Rosney dated October 6th, comments from R.T. Rosenoy, dated October 14th, comments and photos from Taryn LaRaja, dated October 21st, comments from R.T. Rosenoy, dated November 3rd, and comments from Steve Schreiber, dated November 3rd, 2020. Um, I think that's, every, is there, was there another one, Maureen? Did we get a, another, the last minute? Yeah, yeah uh, two, On November 11th? Uh, yep. Um, Yep, on November 11th from Susan Rosnoy. Correct. In email, and I think we received a, I've just got two from Susan Rosnoy. Is, that, is there another one? Um, bear with me for one second. There is one more. Um, Susan Rosnoy submitted one on uh, November 11th, and bear with me, sorry. And, oh, and Ray La Raja submitted uh, public comment and photographs on November 12th today. Thank you. I didn't see that. Yep. So um, we have on this item, there has been um, some public comment. Well, who's first of all, who's representing the applicant? That would be me this evening, Bucky Sparkle. And you're with who, Mr. Sparkle? Uh, I'm with myself. I'm a civil engineer, but I am re representing uh, Pioneer Property Services today. I was just asking about your firm name. So oh, the Zengineer. Zengineer, okay. Um, there's been a lot of public comment raised about the question uh, as to if ZBA can approve this application under Section 3.3241. That's kind of a threshold question, I think, for the for the board. I would like to have public comment on that question rather than on the merits of the application tonight. Um, if the board is unclear about its authority to act on this application, it seems to me it's unfair to be ask the applicant to invest more time and money on this problem on this project until that is just till that is decided. So what I'd like to do is hear from Mr. Sparkle about what I think he's been recently retained on this project here from Mr. Sparkle and then have um, discuss, public comment on the question of the ZBA's jurisdiction for lack of a better term under 3.3241 on this application. And then um, decide if we want to move forward um, with the continuation or if we want to get further clarification. So Mr. Sparkle, why don't you describe what your um, make your presentation. Sure. Well, this is going to be a relatively easy presentation, uh, mainly because I found out yesterday that I was going to be heading up this application. So to a degree, I'm getting up to speed. Similarly, uh, I know we have attorney Michael Pill on who is also working uh, in tandem with me to support this application. 
And uh, he's really a little more qualified to talk about any dwelling conversion and bylaw issues. So I, I will invite uh, Michael to speak up at any point uh, where he feels that's necessary or I'm just going right off the rails. Um, uh, I have uh, just a, a little bit, I am trying to get up to speed on this and, I, and instead of going through the, the details of what we're hoping to do, because this has already been presented already. Um, I want to ask directly about the dwelling conversion. It doesn't sound like Attorney Joel Bard has provided any kind of statement or commentary on the applicability of Section 3.324 and the ZBA's ability to even make an approval for a pre-existing non-conforming situation uh, as we are here now. Did Joel say anything? You know, that's, we haven't, I have not discussed that with Joel yet. So the, the question for us, we'll have a discussion amongst board members about that, and then we'll make a decision um, as to whether to talk to the town council or to proceed ourselves. So um, I, if you don't have a, Mr. Sparkle, I think if you don't have a lot of, of um, substantive proposals around the, about the project, just because you've only just been hired for 24 hours, mm -hmm. totally understandable. Um, I'm not going to force you to, to, to I do have a few other things to, yeah. to say that are yeah. slightly outside but of the dwelling but conditions. But let's deal with so, the zoning issues separately. So let's, you deal okay. with the, the tech stuff. Deal with the, yeah. um, right. sorry. Maureen? Yes. I'm sorry. I don't know where to put my hand. Um, so um, I believe the ZBA chair has been asked is asking the applicant uh, for an update on the project overall. Uh, and so um, I could speak to that so, a little bit uh, is, so the, the, the board opened the public hearing, I believe on October 1st, 2020. Um, uh, and there were um, concerns raised by the board. Um, and after that meeting, I provided a, a summary to the, uh, Neil Mendenson, the applicant, um, and I um, have now forwarded that email uh, to, to Bucky Sparkle, I believe earlier today, highlighting the different topics. Um, and I believe that's one of the intentions of um, Bucky Sparkle um, to be hired. Um, for, for instance, uh, there are um, items of concern regarding drainage, uh, providing a landscape plan, uh, concerns regarding parking, concerns regarding uh, the uh, fence, uh, light fixtures, uh, 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 concerns uh, surrounding uh, the resident manager, and uh, concerns raised about the number of bedrooms. And um, I and I have also provided Bucky Sparkle um, a YouTube recording of the meeting, so he uh -huh. can <laughs> at his leisure to get I, up. I haven't seen that yet. Um, I, I do have a few more things to say. I, I will say, Maureen, thank you for um, the, the filler information there, the background. Um, it, is, it is my understanding that uh, Mr. Mendelson is looking uh, to do a two bedroom dwelling conversion instead of a three bedroom, looking to do four parking spaces behind the building in a manner that would allow vehicles to turn around safely behind the building so they could pull out safely onto Strong, Strong Street um, and I will be taking a look at stormwater management for that property. We seem to have adequate space to do something pretty reasonable back there. Um, I believe Mr. Mendelson is also looking at uh, formulating a, a process to have a, a resident manager there um, that is still in the works. Uh, so I, there, I don't have anything quite certain on that at this point, but uh, he is considering it. And um, I, I understand uh, we need to do a little bit more landscaping around there. There's a possibility for a fence, although I will say I was uh, able to make a stop at the site today. And I, I presume other board members have perhaps had an opportunity to look there as um, a standard site visit. Uh, I, I do find that the property, the side and rear yard are uh, fairly well buttressed by evergreens at this point, relatively mature. Um, they are not in an impenetrable wall, but they do offer quite a bit of screening to begin with, uh, something that could be supplemented, I'm sure, to, to make a very um, significant screen if, if that were important to the neighbors. And I think uh, 
Pioneer Property Services is quite amenable to that. Uh, I've looked at some of the lighting issues and we'll be going over those in a little more detail to make sure that we've got you know, downcast lights. We're not gonna be bothering any of the neighbors with those uh, while providing safe navigation around the property. Um, uh, so that's kind of where I'm at. We are still waiting for uh, a survey for the topographic so I can do the stormwater work. That is uh, the thing that I need on a technical side for that. Um, but while we're waiting, I think that gives us a little opportunity to address some of these other concerns and comments. And I, I do look forward to reviewing the October 1st ZBA uh, Zoom video. Um, but as far as the uh, dwelling conversion goes, I, I think if I said any more, I would just be sticking my foot in my mouth at this point. Um, it, it seems to me and it, it, despite saying that, here I go anyway. Uh, it seems to me that the, there is standards. Uh, standard number eight does allow the ZBA to have a fair amount of leeway in what it is able to approve for non-conforming situations. Um, obviously, this is being contested by neighbors, and um, usually boards don't take specific action until they get some backup from legal counsel. Um, so I feel like personally, I'm a little stuck until we hear from Joel. So, Mr. Mr. Sparkle, I, you know, we, you understand you just were, um, retained yesterday. So we don't expect much more. You've given us a good overview of what you're looking at and that's, that's helpful. Um, I don't think we should, I think we should open to the next after that, unless anybody has questions specifically about the, the, uh, the project and not the legal issues, um, we can entertain those now. And then I'd like to open up a public comment on the question of the board's authority under 8 point, or 3.3241 and specifically clause eight. Um, and so first of all, if there are any questions for Mr. Sparkle regarding um, the actual project, you know, landscaping, the building, anything else that he said tonight? Okay, if not, then um, the issue has been raised from um, neighbors uh, that the questioning the ability of the ZBA to uh, grant this app to consider this application. And so um, I'd like to, I'd like to get uh, just a brief summary, perhaps Mr. Wasiewicz, you could help us by just giving us a brief summary of the issue, I think it comes down to the fact that 3.3241 has uh, seven or eight conditions that have to be met. Um, 12 conditions that have to be met. The first condition is that um, every, it has to meet all the conditions. And condition eight is the conditions that allows the special permit granting authority to modify the dimensional requirements of table three to one time only for any parcel, allow a conversion from section 3.3241 that would add one additional unit, only if it finds the modification would be in accordance with the provisions of section 9.22. In those zoning districts where two family detached duplex dwellings are not permitted, conversion of a non-conforming single family dwelling unit may result in two or more dwelling units under the applicable permit. So there's been some questions raised by the public about whether um, Eight, clause eight or section eight applies in this instance. And I'd like to hear some comment about that before we as a board um, decide if we wanna to get town council approval or if we feel we have sufficient authority to move on this and, at a, and continue the hearing at a later date. So, um, so if there's questions from the board first, Mr. Meadows. Uh, personally, I'd, I'd like to hear from town council before we go forward. Well, I, so you'd, you'd encourage us to get uh, an opinion from town council on this, is what you're saying. Most but definitely. Not, you're not asking to, to stop the discussion at this no, point. No, no, I, no, no, I, yeah. I think the opinion is necessary. Yeah. Mr. Moschevich? Yeah, just uh, you want a little clarification on item eight. Um, yeah. So talking to the building commissioner, Rob Moore, he has indicated that, um, Number eight has been referred to many times on projects like this. Um, 
where there are nonconformances for some reason or other. And basically, it looks like that item, item eight, allows the board to make a decision on a one time only in cases where you're only adding a single dwelling um, to the property. And it is something, a practice that the ZBA has done in the past. So in this particular case, we're talking about a property that appears to be, or it is, too small for current zoning. It is a uh, pre-existing non-conforming property. Um, but item eight was created over time and there's been reference to a, a planning, more, planning board um, uh, meeting that explained how this came about. But basically it was created to allow projects like this that in any other setting would not be able to happen. Um, and you're gonna find many properties in Amherst that will have some non-conformance one way or the other, whether it be setback or, or lot coverage or something that wouldn't allow a project like this to go forward. But Amherst has always been supportive of um, adding more housing to its stock. So this is a case where item eight would allow you to do that and it has been used. Further, your comment that there we go. I reviewed the um, 1986 uh, proposal to town meeting that talked about adding what became eventually this Article Eight, and it talks specifically, as David said, about the goal of that provision and the goal of that warrant was to allow for, to recognize that there's lots of homes that were built. Um, before the zoning laws that we op currently operate under and that they should not be, because they're, they're pre-existing, they should not be um, um, uh, prohibited from making changes such as adding supplemental dwellings and other kinds of um, converted dwellings to this, um, to the property. And that there's, as he said, there's all sorts of, of um, Buildings and homes in this in this town that that existed prior to the the uh, zoning law zoning bylaws and the and the requirements and that this has been used continue often frequently by the ZBA to approve projects. Um, so I would what I'd like to get from I'd like to hear from either uh, the public or the or the applicant if they have other opinions regarding this so we can discuss it with the um with that with that informing our debate i believe attorney pill like Pill. michael pill yes. green miles lipton uh like bucky i was retained yesterday and so i haven't had time to do the thorough research and preparation of a memorandum um what i can say based on uh, a fair amount of experience in being specialized in this area. First, um, I haven't seen any legal authority. I, I haven't studied as thoroughly as I will the comments from the public, I think at least one of whom is an attorney and says he's a specialized land use or land litigation attorney. But law is referent to authority. Lawyers reason by analogy from court cases, legislation, and exactly what the chair just did, for example, which is to go back and look at what amounts to an expression of legislative intent. And also, while you're certainly not bound by precedent, what Mr. Wiskevich did to go back and look at the history of how something has been applied. And so, um, you know, uh, maybe there's some citation to court cases or other legal authority from the neighbors, uh, especially the one who's an attorney. If there isn't, that would be very disappointing and I think would indicate uh, a, a lack of any merit to their argument. Um, then there's at least three things that I want to explore and if necessary, do a mem memorandum. One is it is very, very well established. And I think um, in a prior case to this board, not too long ago, I, I pointed out um, for another section of the bylaw that it is very well established for a zoning bylaw 
to authorize a board by special permit to vary dimensional requirements that would otherwise require a variance. Um, and, and that's exactly what Section 8 does. And as Mr. Wiskevitz and the chair who pointed out, it's for the reasons just stated. There are also two rules of statutory construction that the neighbor's comments have ignored. One of them is that if there are eight provisions, you try to give effect to everything that the legislative body, in this case, the former town meeting, has enacted because they're the, 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 the ones who set the, the policy to be implemented um, by the board with the special permit discretion. The other is that you do not simply read out of existence what the legislative body has enacted. And it seems like that's what the neighbors are asking this board to do. And, and I'm at a loss to understand what their basis is with any legal authority or legal argument to say, pick up and apply, I think it's section two that has the dimension requirements, but on the other hand, simply ignore, I believe it's section eight that authorizes the board to, to vary that. So uh, in, in a nutshell, that's that's where I'm coming from. If town council, you know, as I hope he will, uh, supports the validity of that legislation, I'm not sure there's any need for me to do um, a whole lot more. I certainly wanna try to economize on my time and, and the applicant's uh, money. If town council uh, agrees with the, um, the neighbors, then I would wanna see what he writes. He is a first rate land lawyer. Uh, he and I have dealt with each other, God, going back to the 1980s. And, and I would wanna see what he thinks. And um, I, I would either, you know, if it's persuasive, I, when the other lawyers write, you have to acknowledge it. If I disagree, then I would do the research and write a formal uh, memorandum. And if he agrees that the bylaw is valid, um, I guess the question would be if the board is inclined to accept that as sufficient, then I'm not sure there's a whole lot more for, for me uh, to do. But I thank you for giving me a chance to at least make these preliminary comments on that issue. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pill. Um, I'd like to move it to um, public comment. So I'd remind people to uh, public to address the board with your, your comments. Um, I think about four, four and a half minutes uh, of time for everybody. That's what um, Mr. Pill consumed. And I'd wanna make sure that you have as much time as uh, Attorney Pill has. So who's first? I guess, um, Mr. Shriver. Hi there, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, so I'm Steve Shriver. I live in the neighborhood. I'm not in a butter and I'm the author of one of those letters. So I'm an architect. I was on the planning board for 10 years and I'm currently on the town council, but I wanna make clear that I'm not speaking as a town counselor, counselor with a C, not a, with a S. Um, I'm speaking as a private citizen and um, a friend of, of the abutters. So I'm the one that pointed out that there's a list of 12 conditions that must be met. So Maureen Pollock said that in her letter to me when I was questioning this and Mr. Judge just said that also. There are 12 conditions that must be met. Condition two cannot be met. So really the game's over at condition two. There's an error message there. That's when the review should end. I fully understand that in 1986, the intent was to have condition two married to condition eight. That is not how it reads. It reads as a list. You can't get beyond condition two. So the, the other thing is that land use laws are meant to protect the property rights of the property owner, right? The developer, but they're also meant to protect the property rights of the abutters. And of, of course, in the larger community as well. So one cannot be expected, one cannot expect neighbors to troll through a 1986 document to try to figure out what the original intent of a bylaw is. The bylaw is what it is. The bylaw says what it says. And it says that the minimum lot area must be met. So um, the other thing is that the, the Zoning Board of Appeals is not the legislative branch. So I'm actually kind of concerned to hear that the Zoning Board of Appeals has basically um, interpreted this in a certain way. 
basically acting as a legislative body. It's a very poorly written bylaw. The bylaw should be corrected. The Zoning Board of Appeals should not be interpreting it in a way that it's not written. So if they feel that it cannot, if they feel it should be written in a different way, it should be sent back through the process and be written so that it matches what the 1986 intent was. Uh, there was a major rewrite of this in 2012. I assume that the Zoning Board of Appeals has looked at that also. Do you want to eat? This is going to be going on for a while. Hold on, everyone. Okay, continue. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so um, anyway, I'm finished. So um, that's that's what I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Schreiber. Um, I think the next is Mr. Rosnoy. One minute. Oh, sorry. Ah, okay, I'm unmuted now. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Uh, thank you. And I'd like to reinforce what Stephen Schreiber just said, but also point out that um, uh, I'm Richard Rosnoy, first of all, from 11 Strong Street and, uh, and a butter to this uh, parcel. Um, I'd like to reinforce what Stephen Schreiber was just saying, but also uh, point out that uh, he and I have requested uh, that this uh, board and the uh, planning department contact town council for this opinion. So uh, I'm encouraged that you're considering it, but I actually wish that it maybe might have already happened. Nevertheless, um, I, I do uh, strongly support that that's the way this body should go. Um, because uh, there, as you've noted, there are 12 standards conditions and uh, the uh, bylaw says that all 12 standards conditions must be met. Now granted number eight is thrown in there in the middle of it, but even after number eight was thrown in, which you, some people have commented on, provides some sort of an exception to uh, some requirements. Even after number eight was there, the bylaw still said all 12 requirements must be met. Uh, that is not a, a, a discretionary interpretation that this board uh, can apply to this application. That's a requirement. Uh, I'd also like to point out that Mr. Pill actually uh, reinforced the concept that um, the entire list of 12 should be read in their entirety. And uh, he actually said that in his statement and I would, uh, I would actually support that. If you read it all in their entirety, then you get to uh, standard number two, which must be met. There's no question that it must be met uh, because all 12 must be, all 12 must be met. Um, the uh, the uh, fact that um, uh, the, 20, the 2012 uh, amendments uh, adopted by town meeting um, uh, reinforce this uh, should, I, I think, be further proof to you that uh, it's not a discretionary interpretation that you can apply, but a mandatory directive. Um, I, I'd also, uh, well, I guess I'll stop there. I, I mean, it, it's, it's kind of obvious to me that it, if you ask town council uh, for an official opinion that this question uh, will be resolved and we can proceed one way or the other. I agree with Mr. Pill that um, if town council agrees that uh, this issue is, is uh, not discretionary and um, that you must comply with it, that's one thing. And if uh, town council says, well, you know, um, they're, they're citing various uh, legal legal sources that say that it's uh, acceptable to proceed. Then we'll have an argument at a further time in some other, in some other venue, but uh, if that's the case, okay. One other minor comment I have, which is that uh, it was mentioned by Mr. Bill that you have authorization to grant a permit. This is the Zoning Board of Appeals, and this is a, an application for a special permit. There is no requirement for you to authorize a special permit. Uh, a special permit is not granted um, as of right, as you know. A special permit, this board has uh, every opportunity to review a, an application for special permit with great discretion and determine 
on the totality of the facts and the law as to whether to grant it. This is not a site plan review as a right application by the applicant. This is an application for a special permit. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rosnoy. Um, I think the last person that I was asking to speak is uh, uh, is it Karen LaRaja. Okay. I don't have the, the full name, I'm sorry. Karen LaRaja, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. All right, so I would like to just pick up, pick up right where um, my neighbor Richard left off. And I wanna thank Steve also for coming and joining. Um, so they know a lot more about the laws, which hopefully you do too. But I just wanna pick up where Richard left off is even, even if somehow it's, um, you know, you, you're willing to make exceptions to these rules, which don't seem like there should be exceptions made. Um, you know, this is why we have this board. Like you, you don't have to approve this special permit just because someone's asking for it. And, um, you know, having read the letters, I mean, I've written one and read the letters from my husband and all the neighbors. And it's just like, there's so many reasons which just show that this project really has, like, is, I think against all the reasons that, um, this was put together to even to make an exception. This isn't for um, for the good of the town. <laughs> this is for you know a, a tenement style um, you know living situation for students. And I think honestly the the photos that we've spent that have been sent in, um, which in the past month have recorded so many cars um, parked at the site not three cars, but most days, four cars, five cars. And this is before the extra um, unit is added. And also you would think perhaps, you know, as Mr. Mendelssohn suggested, being a neighbor nearby, that he was gonna be so on top of this, that the fact that there are already all these cars, you know, parked this way and that way all over the property, um, it just suggests that even lowering the, the number of parking spaces. So, okay, so there are gonna be four parking spaces. My guess is there are gonna be eight cars crammed in there, like pretty much every Friday and Saturday night, which we've seen you know, already um, before this is even getting approved. So um, I, I'm very concerned about um, the danger posed to children and neighbors in the, um, you know, who live nearby that um, all these extra cars are gonna cause. And I hope that everyone will really look to those letters and think, you know, is this, is this really a good idea? Is this really what the town had in mind um, when there was even the, the suggestion that maybe there could be exceptions to these rules that probably, <laughs> you know, at, at least for sure in this case, don't make any sense. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Uh, LaRaja. Um, I think we have one more member of the public that wishes to comment, uh, Jonathan Holting Cohen. Oh, his, his hand has disappeared. His raised hand has disappeared. There, now it's back. Now it's gone. <laughs> Hello, Jonathan. There we go. Can you talk? Uh, hold on a second. Okay, I'm gonna press the button one more time. Okay. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, okay. we can. Thank you so much. I'm at 259 East Pleasant Street. And um, yeah, there's a lot of legal discussion and um, I leave that to legal experts. Um, and I would be interested to hear more about how this all shakes out. Um, but yeah, I, I would like to reinforce that you please use your discretion when it comes to this project and try to get to the bottom of the spirit of it. And I understand that there's a spirit in this town of increasing housing. And I think that's really important. And I'm really curious about um, the modifications that are being made. And I, I just really hope that this is actually a responsible project. I think uh, my neighbors and I have a lot of, um, I think pretty legitimate concerns and, um, I, you know, I, we're a little bit downhill and I'm uh, really curious about um, how the water runoff will be handled 
we actually have a lot of basement issues that we've had to attend to already, um, even before this project. So uh, that's, you know, I'd like to reinforce that. And I know this, this portion of the meeting is really about whether or not the zoning board can decide. Um, and I'm not really sure. I've read the same things. I interpreted the 12 pieces mm -hmm. of information as 12 pieces of information. Um, but I just do hope that you all use your discretion um, in considering this. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and it looks like uh, Richard Ron's Ron Roy would like to speak again. One second. Hold on. Uh, thank you. Do, do you thank have you. something new to say? Uh, yes. Yes. Thank you. Um, I'll, I'll be brief here. Um, and I just wanted to point out the reason this um, conflict between uh, standard number two and standard number eight is so important here is because of the size of this particular parcel. Some precedent was uh, mentioned by, I believe, one of your board members and uh, others about, um, about how uh, number eight can override number two. And in, of course, every land use issue is unique in its own way. That's why it's a part of equitable law. Um, but um, the reason uh, condition number two is so important here is because of the specifics of this case and the limited space for this parcel, uh, the size of the building that we're talking about and the application of uh, the combination of how everything would fit together in this particular instance. Um, the exceptions when uh, condition number eight had been applied, uh, I, of course, I'm, I'm not familiar with every one of them, but I, I would imagine that none of them talks about such a confined lot as this with such small buildings as this, uh, trying to put so many people into such a confined area and so many parking areas, uh, parking uh, spaces into a, a confined area. So I just wanted to point out that it's not just a theoretical um, standard number two versus standard number eight. It's very practical in this particular application. Thank you. Um, so what I'd like to do is, is keep everybody having just you know, one comment unless there's something that you haven't said or it hasn't been said by anybody else and then go to discussion from the board. So if, if there is, if you've spoken already and you and you're going and you're saying something that somebody else has already said, um, I would guess it's not adding much to our discussion, but if you, there's something that absolutely must be said, please make it uh, fairly quickly and then make your point quickly and, and we can move on to discussion amongst the board. Okay. Ms. Uh, uh, LaRaja. Oh, I, but I actually clicked oh, on. Okay, oh, all right, Steve. Mr. Schreiber. Yep. I am sorry, I just wanted to add one more thing and that's dimensional <laughs> table, num table number Table three dimensional regulation. So that has not been discussed much, but that too is extremely important because this outlines really every zoning district and every dimensional requirement. So you'll notice that under this particular zone RN, there are no asterisks for the basic lot area or the additional lot area per family. In contrast, there are asterisks on RG, on BL, on et cetera, et cetera but RN has no exceptions. So you also have to take that into account in terms of what the intent of the writers of the bylaw was. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Schreiber. Ms. Loraja. Am I unmuted? Yes. yes. Okay, no, I mean, and maybe this is, this is completely unrelated, but this is the first time um, we've been living in our house for 18 years. And we have the town coming to um, like unclog sewage coming into our bathtub. <laughs> and I don't know if it has anything to do with the students who are living in the property next door, but all I'm saying is we've never had any problem with, um, you know, <laughs> with that before and it's it's getting me concerned like is this related already to students living on the corner and adding yet more would that add to the problems that we're having that we've never had yeah. so maybe it's completely unrelated but it did um strike me that maybe there's some connection okay so that we really want to keep it on the 
the issue of um, 3.3241 uh, at this point in time. So um, there's no other discussion from the public on 3.3241. Um, I'd like to open it up to the board uh, discussion. But before we start, I, I was spending time in the last couple of days looking at this, especially today. And it, my in, initial impression was that there is no reason for section eight, which gives the special permit granting authority us uh, the ability to modify dimensional requirements of table three, gives us, gives the board the authority to modify the um, dimensional requirements of table three uh, to, to on a one time only for any parcel, allow a conversion under sections 3.3241 that would add one additional unit. Only if it's only if it finds a modification would be in accordance with the provision of section 9.22 and section 9.22 when I look at it, um, excuse me, 9.22 authorizes the board, the, the ZBA to allow non-conforming use of a building structure or lands to be changed spe specify use not substantially different in character or in its effect on the neighborhood or on property in the vicinity. Uh, the, the set authority may also authorize under special permit a non-conforming use structure or land to be extended to it or a non-conforming building to be structurally altered, enlarged or reconstruction. But provided that the authority finds that such alteration, enlargement, or reconstruction shall not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than existing non-conforming use or non-conforming building. And so, when I look at the whole, I look at the whole um, context of the zoning bylaws. We have a, a section that says there are twelve conditions that must be met. One of those conditions is that. Um, is that said that you can waive some of the requirements contained in this um, in this section one of these 12 uh, conditions you can waive them on a one-time basis if you do that under 9.22 and under 9.22 which we use all the time it's the, the value is or the, um, the judgment that we have to make is the finding we have to make I think is a better way to say that is that the alteration, enlargement, or reconstruction shall not be more substantially, shall not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing non-conforming use or non-conforming building? It seems to me that it begs that the question for us is whether um, why condition eight would exist if it wasn't there to be used uh, in those conditions in which. You had non-conforming old buildings that just could not meet the um, could not meet the dimensional requirements because they existed many of them before the the bylaws were were written, and so in try, in trying to understand the legislative intent of the town meeting at that time and looking back to old documents, it seems to me it's there for a purpose, and the the ZBA has used this time and time again in the past in order to um, accommodate requests that we judge, that the ZBA has judged, do not um, um, serve to the detriment, the detriment of the neighborhood. So that's, that's how I look at it. Um, and I'd like to hear from other members of the board or staff regarding what they, what they think and their judgment. And I, Mr. Meadows, you were, your hand was up. I'm, do, I'm sorry, but uh, I was on town meeting in 1986 and the way that this was presented to us, um, was that, uh, if I recall correctly, it was presented as though we were attempting to allow uh, uh, what was presented that was, was mother-in-law apartments by the conversion of separate garages on conforming lots such that um, it wouldn't deny people who had the need to bring ailing parents or single parents into a position where they could care for them close by. There was, I don't recall anything at that time about non-conforming lots being allowed to use uh, separate garages to be converted into mother-in-law apartments. Um, I think it's been misconstrued over time to indicate that um, there was an attempt to um, 
increase the number of dwelling units in the center of town such that it, garages could be converted as into student apartments, et cetera. That was not the original intent. It was not the original intent as far as the way it was presented to town meeting. It may have been, um, have drifted into the, the consideration of the town of uh, members of the planning board, particularly when Jonathan Tucker was uh, chairing the planning, the uh, planning department. Uh, but that was never the intent as far as it was prevented, presented to town meeting. Thank you, Mr. Meadows. Um, any other comments from board members seated for this? Mr. Maxfield. I guess, I guess maybe I'm not quite as prepared for this one as I thought I was. I'm not entirely sure what it is that we're, we're, we're focusing on here at the moment. Is it are, are, are we talking about our authority to make a decision on this? Are we talking about, is the plan just not able to move forward based on, on the, the laws as they're written? So we, we shouldn't proceed? I, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not quite yeah. understanding what we're going for here at this point. We're not talking about the project itself. We're, we're not. really just talking about whether or not the project can proceed and it's, it's my understanding that we, we do have the authority to, to proceed on this if we want and then make these findings, then we, we might say they don't meet the findings, but are, are we saying at this point, we, we are saying outright they don't meet the findings or we're saying we don't have the authority to, to even get to that point? I don't think we're making any, I don't think anybody on the board is making a decision about or a, making a statement about whether we have, whether this project meets the findings or not. Mm -hmm. um, what they're saying is that number two has certain requirements that this project cannot meet. And if you don't use number eight, if you can't use number eight, then there's real question as to whether this project can go forward, right? That seems to me to be the issue there. And so the question is, does eight amend two? Is eight stand on its own just as every other provision in this section does and 3.3241 does, they stand on their own, or is does eight not, not have the force and effect to allow the ZBA on a one-time basis to amend the, the dimensional requirements and the dimensional chart. And so what we're trying to do is get a feeling for that. And if the board feels that, no, we're confident with this, um, we don't need to go to the town council and get, um, uh, an opinion from him or her that that's the right, that that's our authority. We've been doing it before. We're going to go ahead and we, we're confident of that. Then we, we can proceed and, and schedule this application for a hearing at a later date. If we want, we can say, we're not sure about that. We have some questions. So let's clear this up and let's ask town council to write an opinion and then ask other attorneys to weigh in on that and then bring it to us, us to make a decision based on the legal opinions that they gather from them. That's what I think the, that's the process here that we're going through, Mr. Maxfield, I think. Does that answer your question? I, I, I think so. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm certainly not a lawyer, so I'm, I'm always open to, to getting counsel, but my opinion at this time is that it, it seems like we could, we could move forward on this, but I guess I'd like to hear from the rest of the board what they think as well. Yeah. Mr. Langsdale, I was just going to ho hoping with you and your experience uh, on the your, your tenure on the board, maybe you've dealt with this difficult issue in the past, and maybe you can give us your the benefit of your uh, uh, experience. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I would say that uh, right now it seems as though what we're arguing arguing what we're discussing is sort of uh, um, what the uh, intent was in 1986 and what we're allowed to do with that now, how things have changed. <clears throat> um, it's, uh, it's sort of like uh, the um, originalists 
with the Constitution. You know, does the Constitution live or is it stuck in 1776 or 70, 1780, whatever? <clears throat> um, I don't know what the intent was in 1986. Um, Mr. Meadows was there and that's terrific. Uh, it's good to hear from him. I would like to find out if there is a way to find out when this was voted on in 1986, what was, what was specifically presented and what was specifically voted on. Then I would like to get the uh, town council, uh, get their uh, uh, decision about this because I think what we're asking, what we're looking at is if two is an absolute, does that mean then that it trumps eight? But if eight is an absolute, how, neither can trump the other one? Um, it seems to me that that's possible shaky ground for the board um, because uh, we are dealing with a, very, a really undersized lot. And um, I, I, I would hate to see us step in and say, well, section uh, number eight and uh, 9.22 says that we can go ahead and, and make a decision, whichever that may be, um, when in fact there's maybe a legal standing why that's not a good idea. Thank you, Mr. Langsdale. Ms. Parks. I agree. I think I would be more comfortable with further advice. Um, um, from my experience, we had looked at converting a garage and it was, if it were to rent it out, I mean, it'd have to be, you have to be owner occupied and that the residential manager issue comes up and um, you know, we were wanting to make an in-law apartment I don't know. I, it was very unclear when we when I was looking into the possibility of doing this. Um, but I also I'm concerned about under 9.22 where it says it would not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood because it feels from comments like it would be detrimental to the neighborhood. And so mm -hmm. I don't know at what point 9.22 <clears throat> is at play within eight and two. So that's, you know, that's a good point, Ms. Parks. I think that, um, first of all, I hear that you're, you'd like to get additional comfort on the legal standing of answer, answering some questions on eight and two. That, and and I, under, I understand that. But one of the things we do have to remember is that 9.22 says we have the discretion to make this decision. We have to, in fact, we have a, fine, we have a responsibility to make a finding that it is not that. So if we, if we are not comfortable with that this would as a board, if we believe that it does serve to the detriment of the community, then we cannot, we, if we can't make the finding that it would be not harmful to the community, we can't approve it. We have to make the finding. So 9.22, it works with, with um, 3.241, 3 works that way by saying that we have to make some findings that it's not detrimental to the, in effect, that it's not detrimental to the neighborhood or the community. And so does, um, and as well as eight requires us to, um, that it be, eight requires us to, to find it uh, through provisions of 9.22. So they do work together. And again, finding that we have the authority to do this doesn't mean that we have, finding that we have the authority to grant a waiver from the dimensional requirements of 3.3241 does not mean we have to approve it. As you know, we always have the discretion that it isn't that is in our um, our judgment as to whether it meets with the bylaws, it meets with the the, the master plan, it meets with the um, and it benefits the community. That's always there. Yes, Mr. Langsdale. Um, and I think uh, <clears throat> to what Ms. Parks was talking about. Um, yes, your what you said about nine point two two is exactly right. The problem is at the moment we don't have. A proposal to mm -hmm. judge, right. Mr. Judge. 
we, we don't have a proposal. I mean, the opening tonight was that they were going to go from three apartments to two. Well, that's a change. Uh, so we, we need it. We need to, I think we need to say, okay, we're going to talk to town council. We'll continue this till January, whatever date. Um, we'll talk to town council when we get uh, a decision from the town council that can be then uh, given to the applicant uh, and Mr. Pill. And if they want to work, if they need to work stuff out before January, fine. If at that point it looks like it's not going to be able to go forward, then the applicant can back out if they want to, or we go ahead uh, and uh, deal with uh, the, the provisions uh, at that next meeting, along with then getting, uh, after Mr. Sparkle has done his work and others, uh, then we will have a real plan in front of us to, to discuss. So at the moment, I'm saying we don't know if it's going to be detrimental or not. Yeah, we don't know what the yes. is that it's going to be, but we don't know yet. <clears throat> All right. Well, it seems to me that there's a consensus among the board members for us to ask town council <laughs> to opine. But before I before I move for that, I would want to open it up to staff, either Dave or Maureen. Do you have anything you want to enlighten us with or ask or uh, provide additional information? No, no, I think okay. you guys. Yeah, it. no. I'm okay. I, so I can add anything extra. <laughs> the one All thing right. I, I could add is more about scheduling. Um, you know, I, I, uh, the planning department wouldn't want Bucky to start his professional work on this until he knows that there's a project to work on. Um, so the applicant has requested a continuance until a date certain in January. However, um, uh, perhaps it, uh, it, if the applicant wants to get a response by attorney Joel Bard, our, our town attorney, to respond sooner, um, would the board want to uh, continue the public hearing until December um, to hear from Joel Bard either by uh, memo uh, correspondence or in attendance to confirm one way or the other and then uh, the January public hearing would be um, well if 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 this were to be continued um, with the application um, just uh, so but Bucky has time to um, actually to um, conduct his work you know um, we, we I really want to leave it up to the applicant the applicant said, give, give me till January, well, let's move it till January. The applicant shouldn't be, um, if, if we can get Bard to give us an opinion, that should be before that, before January, that can be shared with the, the, um, the board, the neighbors and the applicant, um, I think. And they can make their own decision as to whether um, the applicant wants to engage further with either legal or design consultants and invest some money, but, um, and I don't want them to invest it. It's not gonna, it's not, it's not a possibility, right? But I think we should keep, he wants to go to January. Let's let him go to Jan, let the applicant continue this to January. If we can get um, something from town council in the meantime, that can be distributed and um, and we can move on in, in January. May I ask a it question? Seems to me the best, seems to be the best way of, of dealing with it. Yes, Mr. Sparkle. Um, is it possible, just because um, I think Maureen has an excellent point, that if we we do find out something more definitive about requirement number eight, if that's possible in December, maybe we could show up at a public, is it possible to do as a public meeting for just that bit of information? We're, stu we're, we're doing a hearing no matter what. All right, that's that's yeah, fine. Doing a hearing. I, I really do like the idea of getting some definitive answer about this topic so the professionals in the background can move forward for a January meeting. And I think when my client requests a January, I'm not sure that the uh, question about number eight and the, the sort of rat's nest of information that we find ourselves tangled in now was, was in his awareness at the time. Oh, I appreciate what you're saying. Maureen, what do we have for the schedule on December? 
we already have. Uh, December 10th. Uh, December 10th would be the next available. Yeah, and we have, do we have things already on the agenda? Uh, probably. Probably. Uh, yeah. Greg Stutzman and um, his fence and actually uh, that and um, there is a special, uh, there, no, no, there's uh, two public meetings that are, that I know of. Okay, so we got, we do have items on the agenda. Mm -hmm. So listen, so um, if we could confine I, it just to number eight. Thank you, Mr. Sparkle. Um, I think what we should be doing is getting, we don't know how long it's going to take Mr. Barr to do this. I don't want to, the December meeting is, th is uh, three weeks away, right? Four. Is it four weeks away? Yeah. December 11th. Um, and then we'll want to have, if, if we get it out, then if he gives us an opinion, I'm sure we'll get opinions that people who have the other opposite view will want to also weigh in as well. So I'm inclined to go to, and so we won't have that. We won't have all the, a fulsome result before the board to make, uh, to make us comfortable one way or the other, I think in December. So let's move it all to January. If the result comes back from Mr. Uh, Mr. Barr, that's it, great. Let's, we can, we can um, um, distribute it broadly and we will, being in, in January on this matter, because I think the, I think that's the best way to go about it. Okay. But is there so we should probably have a motion as to when we reconvene on when we continue this meeting until. And I would move that we continue this in in January the January eleventh. What's yeah. the date? January uh, 11th. Uh, no, wait, hold on a second. Sorry. Um, that was March. That was the March 11th. March. It, this a lot of 11th. January 9th. Okay. I move that we continue this till January 9th. At what well, time? At what? Uh, at six uh, o'clock. Or six. Yeah. What is, what have we been doing? We've been moving back and forth. So I so, guess uh, Dylan and Joan have, um, have time constraints, right? 6.30 is better for you, Dylan? 6.30 is, is a lot better. And no. Joan, is six, Ms. Amira, is, is 6.30 better for you? I think it has been in the past. Um, I will say that I spoke to the building commissioner uh, reg regarding um, the board of licensing commission meetings and their meetings can start um, earlier and that that should not dictate the, the zoning board of appeals meeting. So if, if six o'clock uh, is the preferred time, the board of licensing meetings, uh, I, there is a member on that um, who had said that 630 is be better, I think based on that meeting, on those meetings. Mm -hmm. he, so they can start earlier? They the licensing can. can start earlier? It Was that your um, issue, uh, Dylan? No, the, the, they, they can't start earlier because I work until five. So they oh. start at five and then. Oh, interesting. All okay. right, well, the building commissioner had, had I had spoken to him today and he said otherwise, but all right, we can, we can continue with 6.30. So we'll do 6.30 on January. I've already forgotten the date. Ninth, <laughs> Ninth right? Ninth? <clears throat> yep. It's ninth. All right. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? All right, it's an all, this is a roll call vote. So I vote aye. Ms. Parks? Aye. Mr. Meadows? Is that an aye, Mr. Meadows? Oh. I saw a nod, but we need to either mute, unmute. Can you unmute yourself? Aye. You <laughs> Mr. Langsdale? Aye. Mr. Maxfield? Aye. Great. All right. Um, that motion, uh, the application is continued until January. The next order of business is um, ZBA 2021-06, backyard AUDs, ADUs, excuse me, um, requesting a special permit to allow a supplemental detached, detached dwelling unit as an accessory to a one family detached dwelling located at 34 Baker Street. Um, 
we had a site visit uh, on this week and at that site visit, well, first off, before we go into that, for this matter, Mr. Um, Langsford, uh, Langsdale is, is not sitting and Mr. Greeny is sitting on the panel. Um, we had a site visit on, I think it was Tuesday at 34 Baker Street. Um, we viewed the boundaries of the uh, property. We looked at the location of both the barn and the house. We um, walked the property to um, get a sense of the size of the house um, and the size of the barn and, and the proposed dwelling. We asked questions about the height and the width. We asked questions about what trees would be removed. Uh, we asked questions about screening for the neighbors. And we asked questions about the number of stories of the proposed um, structures. Uh, there was some uh, discussion about soil analysis and we asked about plans to conduct soil analysis and, and at what time that soil analysis uh, would be completed. Um, those are my memory of the issues raised in our site visit. Uh, is there anything else that, were, that was raised in our site visit that I did not mention? Uh, did Mr. Greeny? Maybe, maybe you mentioned, I didn't hear, uh, that we um, saw the rough location of the buildings. Did you mention that? I, I referred to walking the, the um, dimensions of the building, yes. Yeah. Yep, yep, that's good, but it's a good catch. All right, anything else? Okay, what we have received as a submission, we've received a special permit application, a management plan, an application narrative prepared by Backyards ADU, um, a plan set including uh, proposed accessory use of dwellings, locust maps, detached supplemental apartment floor plan, supple supplemental apartment elevations, a, re a, a plan for the writing studio floor plan, writing studio elevations. We received um, cut pages for exterior light fixtures and we have a staff submissions of a project application report prepared by the planning staff, comments from the Amherst wetland, administ wetland administer and comments from the fire department. Um, that's what that's uh, summarizes our the documents we have before us. Um, who's here for the applicant? Um, I'm here, uh, Chris Lee. Mr. Lee. Mr. Lee, hold off just one second. I didn't ask about this uh, before. Is there any are there any um, declarations that anybody wants to make? I know Mr. Langsdale has recused himself from this, but. Anybody else have any other declarations regarding this project? Okay, or disclosures. All right, Mr. Lee, go ahead. Name and, and uh, affiliation, please. Yep, uh, my name is Chris Lee. I am um, head of design and development at Backyard ADUs, a company that is focused on helping homeowners build uh, these supplemental apartments or accessory dwelling units, depending on what they're called per town build them in their backyards and it's uh, usually being built for family members, which is also the case in this situation. Um, I'm representing Kelly Light and her mom, Bernice. Uh, they are requesting a special permit to build a 790 square foot detached supplemental apartment. Um, her mom has recently moved here from New Jersey in wake of the pandemic to be closer to her daughter. Um, she actually arrived here, I believe just last week um, and is looking forward to uh, seeing this go up. Um, also, as part of the plan, uh, we're not requesting a special permit for this, um, but as we're in the wetland buffer, we had to present this to the Environmental Commission. Uh, we are building a, a 700 square foot uh, barn inspired writing studio. Uh, Kelly Light is a uh, children's book author, and she'll be moving from where she's renting space in Eastworks in East Hampton uh, into this space full time um, to, to write. Um, she's, and this is under a section of the bylaw for um, home businesses. She doesn't propose to hire any employees and has no expectation of doing so. So we think that's right in line with, with what is allowed. Um, I will share my screen and kind of walk through the site plan. I know we did some of this on site uh, earlier this week. Chris. 
screen number two. All right. Can everybody see my screen? Yep. Okay. All right. So I'm zoomed in here on the on the site plan. Uh, Daniel Sauls, a, uh, a local surveyor, helped us put together, and he um, did shoot uh, actual contours on site with his equipment. Um, we also had uh, the wetlands flagged as per the requirements of uh, the Envir the Wetlands Protection Act in Amherst uh, by Ward Smith. Um, and in doing this have the, the necessary setbacks marked as well. Um, as you can see with the plan, I'll zoom out just to give you an idea, a general idea of the space. So at the top of the property uh, is, the existing, is the existing home. Um, there is uh, an existing parking spot. It fits comfortably three cars. Um, and there's a gentle slope going down towards uh, the street and uh, some wooded area uh, that, that screens uh, the property from uh, the road and, and neighbors across the street. Um, the other thing of note, looking at this site plan, and Erin Jock pointed this out on her visit, is the uh, current driveway uh, creates a high point um, between the wet, the protected resource area, the wetlands, and the proposed structures, um, which is one of the things we've been looking at as we have been evaluating what the what the needs are going to be to um, control stormwater and prevent any unwanted sediment and erosion from going into that wetlands, including the wildlife habitat and ending up downstream as there is an intermittent stream in here. Um, we do, we, in addition, we're proposing um, uh, one additional parking spot uh, that brings the proposal in line with what's required by um, the zoning bylaw. Uh, as it requires two parking spots per dwelling unit on the property. Uh, this additional spot will give the property a total of four. Um, the parking spot per request of the Environmental Commission during that hearing will also be installing um, the honeycomb impervious pavers in order to keep that spot uh, impervious, so, or pervious, I'm sorry, misspeak. So we're not um putting any at risk of putting any water into the wetlands um they also brought up that we sh that on the northern property which is out of their jurisdiction that we should consider um, some form of erosion control which we which we do intend to do and i believe we'll dig into that more as as the hearing progresses um, in terms of what we are building i'll move I think we can skip through. I think people know generally where we are. Um, this is the structure that we are proposing to build. Uh, we're building a seven, 790 square feet. Um, it's going to be uh, two bedrooms. Uh, really, Bernice is probably going to use this extra space as a craft room or just an extra space to do things in it. She'll be the only one living in it. Um, shared kitchen living room area and a little and a mud room to come in and keep the keep stuff out of the small living space. Um, we do have lights at the exterior exits. These are downcasted. Um, and in terms of both of them, uh, not really in sight of, of any of the neighbors. Uh, finally, this is a single floor uh, supplemental apartment um, to keep it more accessible for Bernice as she ages. Uh, we are style. We have styled this to look traditional New England. So we've got gabled roofs, white trim. Uh, it's clapboard and uh, window lights. And then, in terms of the other structure, which again we think this is in line with the, we're, we're not applying for a special permit for this structure, but we did want to present it because it's part of what we'll be doing. Um, we are building this barn-inspired writing studio for Kelly to work out of. Um, and it will have basically a big open concept space downstairs. I think there will be a fireplace added at some point, an outside deck. Um, and because this has vaulted ceilings, we had a 12, 12 or 12 pitch roof. Um, we are putting a, a loft up here in order to get a little bit more floor space in here. Um, we, we didn't need the entire space to be lofted. 
Um, and by putting in this, this loft, it created a nice uh, cozy spot for Kelly to write out of. Uh, in terms of use of this, we Kelly's probably gonna use it as a, as a reading room. Um, family guests may stay there on occasion during the holidays, um, but there is no intention right now of, of having it be rented or anything as, as Kelly's gonna be working in this, in this full time. Um, and I think with that, I, I'll, I'll hand it back over and we can um, kind of go through some of the questions that were brought up in that report um, prepared by Maureen. Great. All right. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Um, so the first question I have is um, you don't have any kind of landscaping plan. You asked for a waiver of a landscaping plan, right? Yep. We were proposing landscaping I, right now. You what? We, we're, we're not proposing a landscaping plan right now. Um, the, there's nothing, it's not visible from the street and most of the neighbors and the one neighbor that uh, this is visible of, it, it hasn't raised any uh, objections or concerns. Um, Kelly and her mom is, are probably gonna work on gardens as a project together sometime next year, but we didn't want to put that in here um, as it, it wasn't part of the project at this time. Do you, do you need a waiver for that? Do I need a waiver for that? Yeah, uh, I mean, isn't isn't a landscaping plan of some normally required? Or is that, Maureen, is a landscaping plan normally required into this situation? Yes, yes. So the, uh, yes, so the applicant um, has uh, formally requested a waiver uh, for submitting. Yeah. Um, are you doing any screening for the northerly neighbors? Um, we are not. Uh, Stephen and Phoebe have not voiced any concern about this. Uh, Kelly is friendly with them, and they've been in conversations. Um, so they did not. They have. They have not asked for any. And uh, the structures are modeled to to look nice to not destroy the view. Um, the barn is also similar to one that similar in size to one that's in their property as well. So it, it's somewhat even. So the answer is no, but there hasn't been any concerned raised. And if there had been, um, we, we would have proposed something. Um, one of the things that was brought up at the, at the meeting was you mentioned that you were not going to do a soil analysis. Is that correct? You want to wait doing your soil analysis until after construction? Will so you, please we've been... comment on that because that I, I'm, you, you have to, you, you're going to have to um, explain why that should, why that should be the case. Yeah. So, um, when it comes to, so when, when we look at, at this plan, um, we're, we're relatively flat, we're, we're sloping away from the wetlands and erosion, any, any water runoff is going to go towards the trees. Now I'm not an expert in, um, I'm not a civil engineer, so I don't know to the extent that will be, uh, damaging the habitat in those trees or, or on the lawn. Um, but, as we were but in, under the advice of Maureen, uh, we have tried to contact civil engineers to engage on this project. Um, one of the things that the civil engineers wanted to do before making a formal proposal was to dig a test pit and do a soil analysis, which would have come at the expense of the homeowner before we knew whether or not we were even gonna be allowed to do this. Um, now, we have to dig well, foundation it, for these. It also may, it may influence and inform whether we, whether you can do it or not, depending upon the soil analysis. So and I'm, I'm it, not it's, asking it's a, a chicken and egg, chicken and egg question there, so. Correct, and I'm yeah. not asking for a waiver on it. I'm, I'm not trying to circumvent rules around it. I, um, as we need to dig the foundations and we need to propose something, um, what, I was, what I'm proposing to the board in terms of, of mitigation is to, um, withhold any kind of, have the building commissioner withhold any kind of occupancy permit on these until the town engineer has reviewed plans submitted um, after they've been able to do their analysis when we've broken ground. Um, it seemed, it seemed with this scenario, as it's already been said, that we're not going to be impacting the wetlands. The, the runoff is going towards a grassy area and then going into a wooded area, that it is a lower risk project. Um, that this is a situation where we could do that soil analysis, that time of excavation, um, especially given the timing of this project. Uh, if we were to 
dig and do this this 10 foot hole to find the water the water table and to figure out the drainage points um, there's a chance that the, the lawn would be ripped up and possibly cause more erosion into the area between now and when we can reseed it in the spring so we we're, we're kind of thinking about trying to figure out how can we do this all at once and prevent extra excavation, extra construction sediment, and, and so on. Yeah, I, under, I understand what you're asking, but you're in effect, I'm, I don't wanna be argumentative, I'm just trying to understand. Yeah. You're yeah. asking to get a construction permit to build, to start the building process before you do the soil analysis. And then once that start, once you start to actually put a shovel in the ground, then you want to do the soil analysis. So yes, you want us to approve it, right? Okay. Yeah, if, right. It, if it's required by the board. And the other the other piece in here, the zoning bylaw does not have a, a bar, like any specifics about what um, a adequate erosion control is. Uh, it, it does not discuss that in the bylaw as far as I could find. There is, there is lots as it relates to impacting wetlands, but mm -hmm. as we know that this isn't going to impact the wetlands, per Aaron Jock's comment about the driveway. Um, we're not really sure what we're protecting, what, what level we're protecting to. So that's that's another reason to hear directly from the board what we what we should be aiming for and how it should be judged, whether it's a town engineer um, or if it's just a stamp of a civil engineer that would say we're not impacting any critical resources or the wildlife habit and potentially in those in the wooded area. All right. Um, I, I did have another question on the on the other building, mm -hmm. the barn. You know, I look at that and I think you know that's a potential dwelling unit at some point in time. It's not designed right now. What is what's the what's underneath the loft in that in that proposed barn? We see the from the the uh, bird's eye view. You see the that, that one. What's what's below the loft? This area. Yeah. Uh, this is all open space down here. This is an open staircase, and this is just where Kelly's going to set up her desks and, and computers for writing and sketching. So uh, maybe I don't understand. Go ahead. Mr. Chair, uh, I, uh, yeah. earlier this week, I, I asked uh, the applicant to um, resubmit the floor plans uh, with labels. So um, yeah. in this presentation, um, he um, just didn't use the, the sheets that have the labels. So uh, in your updated floor plans, which you may have, you only have electronically, that, that oh. is a uh, work office area underneath the loft, as or th that is uh, how it's labeled, I believe. Hold on a second. Yeah, I believe that's what I called it. Work area underneath the loft where the, there are no walls or doors in here. The only door in this is for the bathroom. There's no closets, right. so it's not, um, it would be another building permit in order to convert this to any kind sure. of living area. And you'd have to add a kitchen. There's no kitchen in here. It's it's okay. just the bathroom. So the best the best it could be used for, as I mentioned, it might be for a family guest to stay here over the holidays, but it's not really suitable for uh, a dwelling unit, the definition. Not a, Mr. Not Chair, uh, Dave Oskevitz yes. uh, has yes. indicated. Oh, I can't see it. Okay, Mr. Oskevitz. Yeah, hi. Uh, how do you access the writing area? It looks it looks like you've got walls all, all around it. Do you go under the stairs, under the landing? Could yeah. you, and also, could you zoom in um, and, um, and X out of your page thumbnails to the left? Yep. So it, it's an open staircase. Uh, this is eight, this is seven, eight feet of headroom underneath here. Okay. You can walk right underneath them. At that corner. Yes, I think the six foot headroom, as I have marked here, starts mm -hmm. right there. Okay. Um, are there do members of the board have questions of the of Mr. Lee? So you're, do you have um, a question? 
Mr. Greeny, I, I didn't see your hand raised. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. There you go. Oh, now you've muted. There you go. All right. Um, I forget about the hand raising. Sorry. Um, so I don't know if this was in the information and I missed it, but uh, uh, is the intention to start this next spring or this fall? So what we'd really like to do is to receive an approval with some kind of contingency this evening. That way we can break ground on this in December and get Bernice moved in um, by end of February, March. Uh, if we do not receive an approval contingency on it, we will not be breaking ground on this until April when the bonds rethaw. Because if we come back for a continuance in December, um, it, it will be very unlikely that we'll be able to break ground before things freeze up. And that's, um, I just want to reiterate on the, uh, we're not trying to avoid any stormwater mitigation. We, we understand the issues surrounding erosion control and how it pollutes our streams and our waters. Um, we just do not want to pre-dig a 10 foot test pit at, at cost of the homeowner right before we're going to be digging foundation holes. We would like to do that all at once. Um, and we'd like to have some um, contingent contingent approval where we submit something after we've done that and the town engineer reviews it and provides his opinion his his engineering opinion on whether or not it's adequate for this project given uh, the contours the direction of the runoff the permeability of the soil and so on um. So you're, I want to go back to parking for a second. Sure. So you, you, you're, you would need two dwell, two parking spaces per dwelling unit. Right now there's three for the existing, the existing house. So yes. you're just going to, you're going to provide one and where would that be? So we're adding one more um, near the new dwelling unit, which is where Bernice will be parking. So in total, the property will have the required number of, of parking spaces and we're adding one and we don't want to add more than we need to down here because again we're in the wetland buffer there's no need to disturb more than than is, than is required and bernice only needs the one spot and the light fixtures are um downcast yes dark yes. sky compliant yep Absolutely. Mr. Lee, you know, I'm, I'm having trouble with, with getting any kind of contingency. I, I'm having trouble with giving a approval or a go ahead at this point. I think you need, I feel like I need a lot more information about this project than I have before me. I, you know, I feel like I need more about the, the, um, the L, more about the, the, the outdoor, the exterior, what it looks like. I think I, I'm, I'm not comfortable in, in um, holding off on the soil until a later point in time. I'm not comfortable that um, without having a, a landscape plan and other, uh, other, um, normal what is normally required by this board um and i'm so I, i'm having a hard time thinking that this is this is ready i think we need to in my my initial feeling is that this you need to work more with the town to try to get all the requirements that they normally have on um two buildings in the uh in on that lot and and get that back to us before we can comfortably vote to prove this and i think it's a a good idea. I'm not opposed to the the notion. I just don't think it's I don't think it's it, it's ready yet. Is what I'm telling you. Um, so can we can we go through those one by one? Um, in terms of what does the exterior look like beyond elevations? Are there are there questions about the elevations and the materials that you have? Because we we do have all of that information. Um, we're using vinyl siding. We're using clear uh, clear trim, which is a high end PVC board. Um, we're using uh, d double pane windows with window lights. Uh, 
We've, we're going to be doing this as red. Um, what other information about what, what the exterior is going to look like on this would you need? Uh, what's the roof? Asphalt shingles? Asphalt shingles, yep. Asphalt architectural shingles. Um, we're going to be having uh, polymer sh cedar shake, cedar impressions on the gable ends. Um, it's, a, it's a standard seven inch aluminum white fascia board. We've got three and a half inch um, clear trim around the outside, also white. We've got five and a half inch corner boards. And I can, I can do the same uh, for the barn. Um, the barn is going to be sided with LP smart side board and batten. It's a nice engineered um, product for it to look like a true wood finish. Um, we're also going to have traditional window traditional windows. They're going to have the three transoms above. We're going to be using the clear trim work in order to give it a very nice finish. Um, we're also going to be doing asphalt shingles on the barn as well to match the house. Um, same seven and a half inch vinyl um, aluminum fascia on the on the ridges, and this will be white. And that will be white. Yep. Um, I also was one of the things is that you were asking that you we waive the. Um, the sample lease, the complaint response form, landscaping and sign plan. Um, I, in your, in the, for the current owner of that property, but this, um, that makes sense. It's going to mm -hmm. be a, a family member that's there. I understand it. But um, the application probably, the application of the special permit would, would survive uh, for new, into new ownership. And so I, I, I don't think that we should be waiving those. You can, you could certainly do a lease for one dollar a year, and you can have a complaint response. But you need something so that when this, if this property, when and if this property uh, transfers to somebody else, there's, an, uh, there's a plan in place, a, a lease in place that we can then review. Because when somebody would buy this, they would have the ability to rent this out. So, and I, so that's so that's I would we would need to to um, to look at that. And I guess have, I, that's a suggestion. I guess for clarification, are you asking us to create a lease for use by a future owner? No, I'm, you can use it by this owner, but we, we need, this can be used as in the future, this could be used as a rental property I, after or rented out. There's, it absolutely could be. And I yeah. and the special permit flows with the property. So I'm yes. not, I don't think, I, I'm not comfortable saying that we, we're gonna waive all those requirements. You could you can have a lease that that um, is for one, one dollar a year you can have a complaint response that but you have some kind of, of I, I think know, so that when the new owner comes back they say we have to modify the management plan the lease plan for this but we, we don't have that, we don't have that. What? Uh, maureen had a proposal for a contingency on that for change of ownership that she included in the yep. project report uh, so if the board um is amenable to this, uh, you could make a condition of the special permit saying that uh, if uh, if the um, dwelling unit is to be rented, that uh, the the applicant uh, shall submit a uh, a lease uh, and complaint response plan. You also could have uh, another condition saying on change of ownership of the property that an updated management plan uh, be be uh, submitted, uh, regardless if the property is to be rented or not. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Ms. Park. I'm just looking at the suggested uh, conditions and number 15 um is on change of ownership the new property owners will be required to return to the zba at a public meeting for review and approval of the management plan and complaint response plan missed it um, thank you yeah i i'm it doesn't it's not the numbers and uh, it's not i don't have a page number but it's number 15 of the suggested conditions i i got it thank you Ms. parks and it's on page 15. 
conveniently. Conveniently. But but there could be another condition saying that if the dwelling unit is to be rented, uh, well, uh, condition, hold on a second. Condition eight says any dwelling unit on the property being rented shall be registered and permitted in accordance with the residential rental property bylaw. Uh, perhaps the next condition could be any dwelling unit on this property um, shall be um, an in a lease in a lease and complaint response plan shall be required uh, to be submitted for the board for review and, and approval for any dwelling unit on the property being rented. Something like that. Other questions for from the board members for uh, Mr. Lee? Yes, Ms. Ms. Amira. Thank you. Um, uh, two questions. One is, is the barn in never to be considered a residential unit? Because I think I saw a shower in there. Um, it's not going to be considered a residential unit. It's lacking a kitchen and the, the three. It doesn't have a sleeping area that's closed off. It doesn't have a closed closet. It doesn't have a kitchen. And, so it, it and, won't be considered one. Sorry? I said, so it will not be considered one. It would need to have another building permit um, pulled. Um, and okay. it would come back in front of the ZBA for permission to convert it. And I think I understand that the total units will never be sold individually, that it's in perpetuity, <laughs> never can say that word right, but it can never be divided. Um, I don't think that's part of the supplemental apartment zoning bylaw. Um, however, that is not in the plans to do that. We are not going to be selling the ADU separately. But I think the ZBA can stipulate that it can't be sold separately. Is that correct, Maureen? Um, as like a condo, um, I would need to speak with the building commissioner about that. Um, so I would need, I would need clarification on that as well. Thank you. And the heating source for the barn. Um, so both the barn and the supplemental apartment are going to be heated with uh, mini splits. So it's all electric. Okay. And I didn't and notice that both of these. Where are, are they? No, where are they located on the drawings? Um, I don't believe they. You mean on the the, in the interior heads or the exterior um, compressor? Either. Either. Um, so they are not located on the drawings. Okay. Um, but I don't. Is there a requirement for whether the, as we're nowhere near neighbors? I, I didn't anticipate there being a requirement for the location of these. Um, sorry, what was the question, uh, Steve? I'm sorry. Well, where look, if there were going to be mini splits for both these. Um, I was wondering where the mechanical, where there it is in the drawings. I don't see any indication of where the mini splits would be either on the, the uh, in the wall or the mechanical devices on the ground. They're they're not they're not in the plan because it's not required by the zoning bylaw for the site plan. If it was, they'd be here. Mr. Vaskevich, do we have a, other things that we are looking for from the applicant before we can move forward? Is, and number one, don't we need to have the heating? And, would, is there a requirement that uh, the heating and cooling um, Mechanics for this HVAC mechanics for this for a property be shown on the drawings before we before it be approved. So, Steve, if I could, um, in the past we have had people indicate where it's located. Um, yeah. More importantly, when you are um, adjacent to neighbors fairly closely, because sometimes that noise can be offensive, which we've found to be the case. Um, so I guess it'd be up to the board if they would like to see that located. Mm -hmm. 
Um, other than that, uh, smoke detection plans would be coming along with the building permit, but we don't need that at this point. Is the HVAC uh, equipment inside or ex outside? Uh, there's a compressor outside, but I the nearest the nearest house is at least 250 feet away. These are not going to be heard by adjacent neighbors, regardless of where they're placed. They'll also not be seen by the adjacent neighbors. Okay, so under the management plan for additional information, sorry, I'm I'm trying to find it. Let me let me just do it. A keyword search. Um, so for additional information required uh, for apartments, uh, it does list uh, noise management of tenants, parties, music, and any outdoor HVAC equipment. So uh, material equipment and large household goods storage. So it'd be useful if you could um, include that in your management plan of describing the HVAC equipment and then um, showing that on the site plan. We're, we're not creating apartments. We're creating a supplemental accessory unit. Yeah, right. and so, so that, that would require that would, for a huge system, but these are small, low decibel units. I, yeah, so could you show like a box and, and label it? We, or, or where are, we, are we at a foregone conclusion that we're going to a continuance? I, I feel like we're kind of there. I just, so a lot of this is not stipulated in the zoning bylaw, which is, um, puts developers, construction people, architects in a very tough position. Um, and it's, it, it, this is a professionally prepared site plan. We've got professionally prepared, prepared drawings. There aren't any details. We, we haven't talked, we need to talk more about the landscaping plan. Um, I, as far as the, there are no rules in the zoning bylaw about what a, a landscaping plan must contain. So if I come back and say, the landscaping plan is to reseed the grass, I, I, we're not gonna go further than that because we're not, we're not, we're not ready to sp say what types of bushes we're gonna be put in. The homeowner does not wanna spend an additional $5,000 to hire a landscape arch architect to do that. Um, and it's not required by the zoning bylaw. It is, landscaping is required to give the the development street appeal and to make sure that neighbors are not put off by it. In this case, neither of those are an issue. We have plenty of screening from the road and the neighbors, Phoebe and Steven have raised no concerns about this project from an aesthetic standpoint or a screening standpoint. The only thing that a landscaping plan could be brought up for is the stormwater mitigation as it goes for, yeah. for rain gardens, which I am, which, which I, as far as I can see, is the only thing that this plan is lacking and we are not trying to avoid it. We are trying to put ourselves in a position where we are not digging twice at expense to the homeowner unnecessarily. And we're not putting a position where we are going to disturb protected earth near a wetland and leave it open and dirt for the entire winter where it will impact the wetland. All right, Mr. Lee, I, I understand that. There are ways you can put socks around. You can, you can protect them cheaply and it's done every day. You can protect the land, the, the wetlands around the site that you have to dig for um, for a pit. It's yep. they do it they're all the time. Here. And so I, I, I understand what you're. I understand your frustration, but also and and this isn't a. We're not going to have a to and fro here. Uh, what we're going to do is have the. We've heard from you. We're going to have the board discuss this a little bit. Um, if they have other questions, they can ask you. But one of the things that I am impressed with is that the zoning bylaw isn't um, always exact, but it leaves up to the discretion of the zoning board of appeals to say, we feel good, we, we feel comfortable, we're ready to act on this or we're not. And that's what we're gonna just, that's what we'll discuss in a little bit. And if we are, we will act tonight. And if we are not, we'll wait till we will act at a later date. And, and if you don't, I just ask that we have very specific requirements because it's um, okay. from what we've seen when, the first time going through Amherst. Thank uh, you, Mr. Lee, we understand your request. So, and we've had a good back and forth, but I'd like to have the discussion with the board now. So um, I will open up discussion on this matter, um, the public hearing or discussion amongst board members as to if they have other questions for Mr. Lee or if they have discussion about this project. 
So we're in the public hearing. Um, if we don't have further discussions, and there's, and we also need to see if there's any public comment as well, since we are in a public hearing. I don't think we have any attendees um, who are for public we, comment. But we do, hold oh, on a second. We do have one, yep. Uh, hold on a second, uh, okay. Uh, Fran Van, uh, Van Truss, hold on a second. Um, I thought I hit it, oh, here we go. I need to mute. Hi, uh, uh, Fran, you, you can speak now. Can you, yes. can you speak, uh, say your name and your address? Uh, Fran Van Trace, uh, 17 Moody Field Road. I'm gonna butter to the east of the project. And this is the first time I've really seen this project. I have a lot more questions. Um, about the number of units here and the future of this thing. And I would request that you continue this hearing so that we have a time to look at this and comment on it. If you vote on it tonight. You will, hang on. I really am very uncomfortable with that. So I'll I will just relax, Nina. Okay, thank you. Wait, what? I'm sorry, what? Uh, sorry, I'm sorry, Fran, you were um, rudely interrupted. Um, can, please continue. No, that's all. I just would request that you continue the hearing so that we have a time to take this in and comment on it. Okay. Thank you. Are other attendees, uh, any other members of the public yes. who wish to speak? Yes. No, Mr. Langsdale? Well, it's actually not Mr. Langsdale. It just says that I am uh, Nina Wishingrad. I live at 43 Baker Street. Um, I just wanna say two things. One is that we had not seen these plans and neither, I just spoke with, you keep saying that you have not heard anything from Phoebe Hazard and Steve Stroud. They have not seen these plans. We've not seen these plans. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is 1,400 more square feet. The house itself is 1,100. Our house is uh, 13. So this is a lot of, this is much bigger than we thought with three dwelling units. I'm extremely concerned about should this change hands as you've already talked about, what will happen? Thank you. Um, Mr. Langsdale. Uh, Keith Langsdale, 43 Baker Street. Uh, there are several issues that I would like to address. <clears throat> One. Um, and Mr. Langsdale, can I just stop you for a second? You're speaking as a member of the public, not as a member of the board, right? Correct. Good. I'm at Thank a butter. You. Yeah. Uh, it is typical uh, when we when the board reviews plans that they have a light plot. Um, the, uh, Mr. Lee has stated that the lighting is in fact dark sky compliant. However, what is shown on the drawings uh, are um, not necessarily dark sky compliant. Uh, that needs to be addressed. There needs to be, it is very normal for the board to have uh, in front of them, a um, some sort of uh, rendition of what the lighting actually will be, the outdoor lighting. Uh, the landscape plan is also uh, typical and normal. Um, and I would say, uh, Mr. Lee keeps talking about how gradually this, the, uh, uh, the slope is from the, uh, the west to the east, which it is, um, but that's the way the water runs. Um, it will run that way down toward the, um, the road. What he calls a wooded area is a very small area of very few trees. It's not a woods um, lining the western edge of this property. So the addition of impervious buildings, two of them, plus um, 
anything else. Uh, the porch, uh, each one has a deck and a, one has a deck, one has a porch. Um, there's a question of how much the water is going to be affected, which is why um, there should be a soil analysis and that should be addressed by a civil engineer, which again is normal for the board to hear and to see. Um, the colors. So just say red, one's going to be red and one's going to be white. The board should have uh, examples of that, of the what, what red, what kind of red. Is it a fire engine red? Uh, that needs to be specified. I think that the, the, the question of can these parcel, can these buildings be sold separately is a huge one for us as a butters. This is a major question uh, and it should be a condition that they cannot be sold as separate entities. There are th there'll be three buildings, all of size, especially the proposed uh, living house has two bedrooms, but there's one person going in there. There's also, there's only one parking area uh, being added for the two bedrooms. That's not normal. Um, this thing about the mini splits in the generator and they're not going to uh, impinge on anyone. How do we know that? There's nowhere is it indicated where they will be. Uh, and I, I, I think Mr. Lee said that the nearest house was like 230 feet away. I can measure, I think mine's closer than that. And there's one immediately across the street uh, which is certainly closer. And uh, Stephen and Phoebe's house, I'm not sure, but I would think that theirs would be closer as well. Um, the, the, uh, the drawings should have everything on them. And this thing about, I think he said a generator outside the house. Um, we don't know anything about that generator. It's positioning, uh, it's size, what make. Um, we know nothing about that. We need to know about that. Um, so I guess right. those, for, for right now, those are my questions. But um, I would certainly have more questions uh, if this is continued and uh, they come back with uh, more detailed plans. And uh, I would also ask the board to really consider the, uh, the, the act, the, the fact that these are almost, the, the house is at 790 square feet, which is just under what I think is the 800 square foot uh, allowance. And then the barn is 700 square feet for someone to write in. These are very large pieces to be put on this property uh, as, uh, and so I, I have real concerns about it. Uh, Mr. Lee also said earlier, nobody has made any kind of uh, uh, questions about it. Well, we haven't been contacted. We didn't see plans. No one contacted us. No one asked us anything about this. So now you're getting some feedback on it and you'll get more. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Langsdale. Um, other members of the public wish to comment at this point? So- uh, Yes, yes, hold on. Oh, do we have uh, one? Yeah, uh, Phoebe Hazard. Oh, dear God. Okay. Ms. Ms. Hazard? Phoebe, uh, Phoebe uh, can you hear us? Yep. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, please state your name and your, ad your address. Hi, this is Stephen Stroud of 208 Snell Street. And I'm here with Phoebe Hazard. And also of 208 Snell Street. And um, I, I just want to weigh in that uh, the our lack of participation does not imply consent to any of this project. So it, um, I I was informed that um, other people were speaking on my behalf on this meeting 
that um, by saying nothing that that implied consent. And I just want to make it clear that that's not accurate. Um, I, I, I was just listening to Keith and um, he voiced the concern about the um, having two new rentable units on uh, this property and that it doesn't appear to be zoned for that. that that's the biggest concern that um, Phoebe and I are having. Um, the, I mean, it, yeah, go, go ahead. I think um, in looking at the plans, I had anticipated the um, second house to be a tiny house, um, which it does not appear to be by my estimation of a tiny house. So I think that was a surprise. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Um, I think that's it for people. Any other public comments? Um, Kelly, uh, hold on. Uh, where is this coming? Uh, state your name and your address. Kelly Light, 34 Baker. Oh. You're the homeowner of this property. I am the homeowner, yes. Yep. Okay. I just I just want to voice that I did send out a letter to the residents of Baker Street as well as to Phoebe and Stephen um, saying that if they had any questions, I explained the project and I said I am more than willing to communicate and, and answer any questions that they had. So I just want to correct the, um, the claim that I didn't provide any information. Um, I have been in contact with people and I have offered to um, show anything and to answer any questions. So I just want to correct, correct that, that, that that claim is not, is not true. Talk about the art studio. We, we included a letter in our wetland notification as well as we were required to send them and it provided contact information to us and that was out there. And I'm, and I'm, I'm still willing to answer any questions that anybody has. All right, thank you. So um, if there's no other public comments, uh, going once, going twice, any other public comments? The, the, uh, the typical, our, our process is to provide the applicant with the opportunity to respond to the specific uh, comments of the public if they wish. Um, and I don't wanna, I don't wanna let that um, hang out for a period of time. It's best for you, I think, for the applicant to be able to respond directly so that the board can hear your response to, and to the, some of the concerns to the extent you wish to respond to them. It's probably valuable to do it tonight as opposed to a later point in time. Sure, I, I don't, I don't think it, I don't think I'm, we, we need to take the time for me to respond to all of them. No, I, just I, the ones you want to. Well, I, not even individually, I think just in aggregate, um, a lot of the things that have been brought up, and I said this earlier, uh, it, it's not part of the zoning bylaw, it's not part of the requirements for the site plan, um, and it would be very helpful um, for this to be, I mean, if we have to be at this level of detail to get approval in one hearing, I think, I think that that needs to be specified in the zoning bylaw. When we were putting this ap application together, our, our professional surveyor had to come back to the site on several different, de on several occasions to fulfill requests by Maureen, who was helping us prepare for this. And even with her detailed preparation, we are not meeting everything that's being required by the board which again is not specified in the zoning bylaw. So I, we're not gonna get anywhere on this tonight. Um, so I'm not gonna dig into that, but I, I think, and I, I wanna, I also wanna just say this. So we've been doing this in towns throughout Pioneer Valley. We've been getting approvals throughout. Um, we're very conscious of the environmental impact on these. Our homes are net zero ready. Um, we're very conscious of trying to keep the cost down. So this is an affordable option for people's parents who can't afford anywhere else to live. We're doing this in multiple states. And- So Mr. So Lee, far, this is an uh, opportunity to respond to the to, I, to public I am comments. I am no, you're, 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 these are not, no, nobody was talking about that. So please keep this to response to the public comments. You've had your chance to do your, to do your presentation. 
and then then the board will discuss and see what we want to do. So the, the response is the zoning bylaw does not require many of the things that have been brought up in public comment. And I think the decision of the board should be based on what's specifically required in the zoning bylaw, not some of the additional things that are being added to the zoning bylaw tonight. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Lee. All right. It's an opportunity for the board to discuss um, in, in the public hearing, as we're still in the public hearing, opportunity for the board to discuss this amongst ourselves um, before we would, uh, we and we could choose to um, close the public hearing and move to the public meeting and make a decision. We could choose to continue the public hearing at a later point in time, and that way we wouldn't move to a public meeting on this. So those are our two choices, and I suggest that we have a conversation uh, about this, a dialogue about this amongst ourselves and not move to a public meeting unless uh, we reach the conclusion that we're ready to vote tonight. Ms. O'Meara. Um, it's, it's feeling adversarial and I don't mean that yeah. for this to go that way. And I wanna feel like this project can go forward truthfully in all honesty. honesty. I, I wanna look at the mechanicals. I think that's bare. Um, I think a minimal landscaping design layout, even if, even if it's just like reseeding the grass, that, that works. Um, I wanna support Kelly and her family in going forward, truthfully. That's all I have to say. Mr. Greeny. I think, um... Yeah, I, I, I kind of agree with Joan. It's it's gotten a little contentious. I I, I feel kind of in the middle. I, I think uh, Chris has some valid concerns. He's trying to uh, help small homeowners have supplemental units and not have um, uh, unreasonable costs. And that's, I, I wanna honor that. So I don't have enough experience, but his request for uh, co combining the soil analysis with the original digging uh, subject to town engineer approval, um, that seems reasonable. Um, you know, it's some risk to him. If, he, if they dig and they say, oh, this isn't working, then, then he's stuck. So uh, it does have to be approved by the town engineer. That, that, seems adequate unless I'm, I'm kind of new. So maybe I'm not understanding all this. Uh, in, tr in terms of landscape design and screening and all that, I think on a small project like this, we've seen the site, it seems uh, like it would create a lot of unnecessary expense. Um, the noise level of the compressors or whatever the heating units are, uh, that might be useful information to have, but it's would be kind of surprising if the noise level were so high that it would disturb the neighbors and wouldn't disturb the people living in the buildings. Uh, but maybe we should know the decibel level of the units. I don't know. The thing that to me is the real concern, and I don't see, I, you know, I, this is my first hearing, so I don't know that we might not be able to work this out tonight, but the conditions for resale. So just off the top of my head, and this we need to discuss, it seems like we, there should be a requirement that the uh, properties cannot be separated. And um, I think one of the most powerful assurances that the thing would not turn into uh, uh, an objectionable rental situation for the neighborhood would be to require owner occupancy because the research has shown that the requirement of owner occupancy almost always ensures that um, multiple unit dwellings remain uh, civil and um, uh, not not negative impact on the neighborhood. So I think that's the thing that I'm most concerned with. And it seems like that's gonna take us some time to work out. 
Thank you, Mr. Green. Miss um, Mr. Maxfield and Ms. Parks. Mr. Maxfield. I mean, I definitely hate to hold up a project um, you know, that we could potentially move on tonight, but it's definitely not uncommon for the board to, to have, have questions that you know, maybe isn't necessarily clear in the, the, the zoning bylaw, but you know, part of this meeting, and I think you know, the objective here is really to the, to the public. And I even just think something like just the, 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 the generators alone, that is something we might specifically want to know about what are, is the, the decibel level of those. Um, I think something like that is definitely going to be a concern to the neighbors that I think if we if we are going to to hold this off, I mean it's 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 a shame with the timing that the ground is about to freeze. But our our priority here as the zoning board of appeals is is to the the public and the impact granting uh, any special permit or waiver is going to have. So I I think if we are going to take this back, we have to be really clear on on what it is we're looking for. Uh, and one thing I'd like to know about if if we do decide to go that route is what are those generators going to be? What are they going to sound like? What's the size? I think those are important to me, at least. Thank you, Mr. Maxfield. Ms. Parks. All right, and I, I'm also, um, I am, uh, I don't feel bad about this project. I do think it's important for uh, the abutters to have a chance to absorb it. Um, I do think that we can add a condition that um, you know it can't be sold separately, or if it is, it has to go come back to the ZBA, or you know, at a condition that will work that way. I, I'm sure that the intention is not to create additional rental units uh, on this property. Um, so I, I I I feel the same way. I, I guess that everyone feels it's uh, you know it would be nice to see this go through, but I guess we're feeling like it's we're not exactly ready. Yeah. So. Yeah, I I, I also feel the same. I, I I'm not opposed to the concept here. I think it's uh, and and I think that um, it's part of the master plan that we have in this town is to try to provide um, some infill housing and support people who want to who want to um, have mother-in-law suites or in-law suites whatever that you want to call it or provide housing for families that's something that is uh, I think important for the the town's goals um, but what this feels like is it's not ready yet and we do have questions and so I, I would encourage the applicant to work with the staff specifically to um, talk about what some of the things that we that we have discussed tonight that we need so I think more information on the drawings, more information on the HVACs, come up with a landscape plan, even if it's what, you know, whatever it is, come up with a landscape plan for telling, telling us what it is. I'm, I, ask, I think you need to convince the town that the soil um, analysis can be done after, after we've uh, approved the, after you've gotten the building permit or you started when you're digging, I think, that's the wrong time for that. I don't think that's uh, the right idea. Um, so I think there's several things and I'm confident that if you work with Maureen and, and uh, the building inspectors to be able to find out the kinds of things that we almost always ask for um, amongst, uh, for zoning, for uh, applications such as this for special permits. And I think we, I, I don't think there's, I don't think you're hearing in opposition to the project. I think you're hearing that we need more information and we're not ready to make a decision at this time. Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Waskevitz has a comment. Yes, Mr. Waskevitz. Yeah, hi. Um, just a response to Mr. Lee, who was indicating that there's nothing in zoning requiring some of the things that we're asking about. Um, if you look under a supplemental detached dwelling units, one of the requirements, number five to be exact, refers to design review principles and standards. So if you go to that section of the zoning, it talks about um, different things that should be provided, including landscape, um, goes into a, a streetscape topography, all of that uh, scale. It also talks about uh, choice of materials, color, size, 
So a whole lot of things that we talked about tonight. So if you want guidance, look through that, that might help. Um, you have referred to screening being all over the, the neighborhood, but it doesn't show on your the plan that I'm looking at right now. So it does exist. Uh, do you have a plan that shows that? Um, and then my experience with one of your neighbors down the street, I don't remember the address, it was a number of years ago when I was working with the town starting out, uh, but they built a garage out there and they ran into ledge probably two feet down uh, where the water table was also coming out. So maybe a soil analysis where you think you're gonna be digging maybe a full foundation uh, might be something you wanna do a little sooner so that you're aware of what the conditions are actually like out there. And I would like to add that uh, section 10.38 of the zoning bylaw additionally gets into the very uh, topics and concerns expressed by the board, um, such as drainage, screening, HVAC equipment, lighting, um, and its impact on the neighborhood. Mr. Greening. So I, I, I don't want it to be lost that, at least in my opinion, uh, I, I do consider most of the things that were just mentioned as being of relatively minor importance compared to the issue of the future of this project. We met the people who live there. It's pretty clear that the impact on the neighborhood for the current situation is, is going to be benign. But this could easily be crowded rental units in the future. And I think the most important um, aspect of what we need to do is to ensure that it remain that kind of situation and not crowded, packed rental units in the future. And I think that's those are the concerns of the neighbors uh, that, that I heard most strongly. All right. Um, if there's no further discussion from the board, I move that we continue the public hearing on this matter until um, I guess I would like to, would you, do you would, would you be ready, Mr. Lee, would you be ready in December? December 11th? Is there a decision coming out of the, are, are we requiring a 10 foot deep soil analysis and full engineered mitigate are we going with the suggestion of Mr. Greening that we may be able to get a contingency with the engineer because if we have to get an excavator out there and find a civil engineer that it's in their schedule we're not going to be ready uh, no I'm I guess you have to I don't know the answer to that the question I had would you be ready to are you would you be prepared to come back and 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 have the amendments to the plan to have a landscape plan ready and other things ready to discuss it more. And then we can condition um, what we do based on the discussion of the board. I don't know if we... So all, all things besides the, the engineer drawings, I would say yes, but, okay. if, but if it's likely that we're going to attend the December 10th or whatever date it is and be here, um, I think it's been about four, three and a half hours and and have to go back and, and do that and come back in April, in January, I would say no. So I, I would I would I would really could ask, have some kind of determination on that piece tonight on what well, we we're you're not gonna you're not gonna get I don't want to make this I really don't want to make this contentious. I really want to keep the temperature down on this. So if you I don't I think that you can, um, if you want to come back in December, we can continue it at, till that point. You can discuss with the staff and others, the town, about what you need to do to provide um, the information that we that you heard us tonight. The information we need to make a decision. If you feel that you're not going to be ready, or you don't, you don't want to that the wet, the weather would prevent you from moving forward. You can ask that we can at December we can ask that you continue it until the spring. 
So you have a lot of options. I'm giving you the option to say, we'll have, we'll have enough to, to make um, you comfortable in December. If that's not right, we can, we can continue it on till April. But you're hearing from people here that they wanna to try to be helpful. And so I'm trying to give you that opportunity to act as quickly as possible. So you can come back with drawings and you, and you work with the town in terms of the, the soil analysis and what they need to get from you. Okay. If you want to, if you want to come back in December, we, we do want to come back in December. But again, I'm hearing that it's up to the ZBA what we need for the soil analysis, not up to the town. So, or the SEP or, or Maureen. And it sounds like the board may have some split opinions on that. So, we're going to be making a decision, me and the homeowner, about whether or not we want to spend $5,000 up front before we know whether or not this is going to. Um, be able to get past the concerns raised by other neighbors, which at this point, I'm not so sure it is. So what you're asking us to do is, as I understand, is that we're going to need to go back, spend another five to $10,000 to do this with the risk of not getting an approval ever. I think that's an unacceptable place to end on for the homeowners. What's your... I will... Skevich, uh, can I just ask a question? What um, what is required for the soil analysis? What specifically is required? We we normally require soil analysis do, be done. You analyze analyze it. You tell us how the, the soil is going to percolate the water, and then from that we can make a decision as to whether it's an whether it's an appropriate place. If you have ledge, if you have other kinds of things underneath there, you're 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 going to want to know that. Right. So, what do we what, what do we typically so typically when when there is an increase of runoff or volume uh the town requires that um the applicant provide evidence by a professional engineer of how they will handle uh stormwater management additionally uh as i referenced section 10.38 of the zoning bylaw specifically section 10.389 and 10.390 um, are two uh, sections that the board needs to make findings related to drainage. And um, as I've advised the applicant several times um, over the last month or month and a half, that it would be um, uh, useful for the board to have this information um, as you make your findings for this uh, decision. Um, so um, I'm happy to schedule a time for him to meet with myself in the building commissioner uh, to discuss um, discuss how uh, he can provide that information to the board. Um, would it be useful for the board to create a list of other items um, that should be um, submitted? Uh, I heard um, some comments about um, perhaps um, more information about the light fixtures. Yeah, um, we, heard, we heard the HVAC, um, yep. just a at least a description of what it is and where it would be. Okay. Um, uh, and then, we need to know, the. I think it's gravel for the parking. Is that... I'm not sure. I, I think it's gravel for the parking space, but we should know what the what the parking is. Um, Color of the buildings. Um, so uh, uh, perhaps the applicant pr could provide like a, a sample of what that color would actually look like uh, for each of the buildings. Um, let me yeah. go through. Through my notes. Um, um, I, I think we, you know, uh, uh, we will want to talk to them about uh, uh, the ability to separate the units in the future. Um, I think that is a concern that I've heard from board members. Um, so we wouldn't want to be able to, to sell units individually. Um, I think we need to have some kind of a, and even, so I think the word, the concern you were hearing is that this could be rental property in the in the future and so we we have to i think we want to um create conditions that mitigate the opportunity for that to happen 
And I think the best thing for do is to work with Maureen and the, the staff. They know this, they know the board well, and I think they've heard our concerns and I think they can relate those to you. And you can decide if in December, if you're prepared to, to present to the board at that point and ask for us, if, you, if you're ready, if not, you can ask for a continuous at a later point in time. We're not closing it off. And you can come back more than once. Mr. Maxfield. One thing I, I definitely want to hear from the from the board uh, before we finish this, and excuse me, it's it's very late for me. I'm I'm very tired yeah. at this point, but I'll I'll try to be as articulate as I can. Um, it sounds like uh, from what I was hearing from the applicant, they are they're more than willing to do all of this between now and the December 10th meeting to get uh, the rest of the presentation together. But uh, I would like to hear from the board, and I'll, I'll give my opinion as well as to the soil sample. Um, you know, soil analysis and, and you know trying to do that at the same time uh, as, as digging the foundation and unless anyone seems to have some reason why, why they couldn't do it it seems to me uh, that's the information they're looking for from us right now I'm I'm fine with that that seems to make sense because if they start digging the foundation and that's part of the soil analysis and then we put some stipulation on there that if the soil analysis says you can't do it, then you can't do it. Um, is, is that something that the board can do? And if so, is that something that the board would want to do? Uh, Cause I think, you know, that argument to, if you're gonna bring that out there to begin digging um, and then it says the soil's fine and then come back out again to dig, um, I understand their concern of not wanting to do the soil analysis to then have us then reject this project for a totally unrelated reason. Uh, are we okay as a board with with that that proposal of, of doing the soil analysis at the same time as the digging? Well, I think it's that assumes that we we approve it and we don't have any knowledge of the soil. So we approve that we approve it. So I, but I, in either case, I think you know what I do think we should do is I, I don't think we're ready for a decision tonight. And I think we should move through and continue this until December. If they want, if they're ready to go at that point, we can we can talk about it some more. We can even discuss the soil issues at that point. But I don't think that there's, I'm not prepared and I don't think my other board members are prepared to approve this tonight. And so let's have the applicant work with, work with the town. Let's have the applicant um, and the town talk to the applicant about what's the right process, how it is normally done for soil samples and, and uh, runoff and come back in December and, and consider it again. That's what, and if they wanna delay their construction until if they have to delay their construction until April, that's, that is too bad, but we're not ready to make that decision tonight. And I'm not ready to make the decision to approve this at this point. I, I don't think that, sorry to interrupt. I, I don't think uh, uh, Mr. Maxfield is asking uh, we're just trying to get some. I, but I don't know the answer to what Mr. Axiel is asking for right now. And so let's work with the town on that. Oh, but I, I, the, Mr. The, Chair, if I, if I may. Um, yeah, I guess I just want to clarify my point. I am not comfortable making a decision on this tonight right. either. Uh, one of the things I'm, I'm, I've heard from the public comments section was some of the abutters might have objections to this project on its merits and that we might consider that might ultimately, we might decide to reject this project. And one of the things between now and that December meeting as they're working on those concerns is one of the things we want when they come back to us in December to be the soil analysis. Do we want that in December? Could we, do we think we could make the decision without the soil analysis? Because if they come back to us in December, we hear from the public and we decide, you know what? we're not approving this project, we vote nay, they don't get the project, that could happen. So are we gonna require that they do the so soil analysis ahead of time to then potentially have this project get um, rejected for a different reason? Or are we okay with them getting everything else but the soil analysis? And then we might at that time, should we approve the, the project, put a condition on saying it's approved on the condition that the soil analysis says it's okay to build this, but then let's say that soil analysis comes back and it says, no, then that project is, is simply flat out rejected. Are we okay with, with that scenario? 
what it, do we need the soil know. analysis before the next meeting? What, what's the board's feeling on that? Maureen and Dave, help us with it, what's done typically. Well, I, I don't think it has clarify. to be done. So I just want to Go clarify ahead. the soil, the test pit, and, and Dave Waskevitz, please um, step in. Um, it, uh, the soil analysis is just uh, one step in providing uh, the drainage uh, plan for this project. So the drainage plan is actually dealing with stormwater management post construction for this project. So meaning water coming off the roofs um, and any new uh, impervious, so all impervious uh, surface. So, um, and then, so that's taking a look at the surface water. The soil analysis is looking at what is the condition of the soil. So you would take both that information and then create a, a drainage plan and a, a, a stormwater uh, like report or summary. Um, so it's not just isolated to a soil analysis. It, it's, it's, um, it's one of the steps to get you to a drainage plan. And so the drainage plan, so as you can see on your, on your screen today or tonight, is the contours, I believe, are existing contours. Is that correct, Chris? Yep, we're in, in the second, we're not proposing to change those either. So the drain, the water will drain as shown by the contours across the grass and towards the, uh, um, not, not forest, but treed area. Okay, so, um, so if there were any changes to the grading, uh, as a result of this uh, of the two of the proposal here, um, he would uh, be showing um, the the proposed grading um, in relation to the existing uh, grading. Dave, do you have anything to add? Yeah, I was just going to say um, I would hope the contours would change a little bit because, as it's shown, it's going sloping downhill as we head to the west, right? Um, I can't read the numbers right now, but so you would have some contouring happening around the structures to keep the water away from them. So you would be building it up a little bit and deflecting around. So there will be changed uh, drainage patterns or, or mm -hmm. uh, whatever you want to call it. Um, so that needs to be addressed. You also don't want it going off of the property into the neighbor's yard because of these structures. So you have to be sure that you set up your your landscaping or your contour so it is not doing that. And you are what 25 feet, 20 feet to the neighbor's property. So you should be thinking about that. And typically, am I right? Typically the storm water um, drainage and the soil analysis informs placement and uh, landscaping and um, grading of a property. And you build off, you use that information to to, to decide in many cases, to decide how you place and, and um, the, the structures. And they, in, they inform your placement on the, on the property, it seems to me. So I would really, you know, we're getting on to 9.30. We spent a good amount of time here. Um, Tammy, I saw your hand go up. Ms. Parks, go ahead. I just just quickly, is there so is there like a soil test, which is like you just take a core to see what's there, or in order to do this kind of drainage thing, you have to do a big excavation? From my understanding, it's a big excavation so they can find the um, the water the water table, and then also look at um, the different layers of soil to understand the absorption rates. It's not a small thing; it's generally very expensive. I. I, I think we should end this. And I just well, want to say one last thing. It's not related to this project. Based on this, I don't think these can be built affordably in Amherst, Massachusetts. It's a, it's a very unfortunate um, result of tonight. Um, and it's going to reflect what, what we're doing as a company and, and how we advise homeowners in the future. We also have a... Um, Thank you, Mr. Lee. Invite by Amherst neighbors to present to elderly homeowners in Amherst about this as a possible affordable housing option. And it's Mr. Not, Lee, Mr. Lee, we're, we're not, not. We're, 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 we're discussing what we're going to be doing in whether we want to continue it or not. I'm, I'm sorry that you're upset about it's this. It's not, it's not but to me. We, but, we, it's, but let's, it's let's move. We're Mr. Lee, we're in the point now where we're going to have a discussion amongst the board members. I'm the motion before the board members right now is to continue this to December. 
All right, December 11th. Is that correct? Um, hold on a second. That's, we were even talking about the time, December 11th at 6.30. 10th. Uh, 10th December 10th at 6.30. Um, I think we continued another one at six. So, um, did we continue? Oh, no, no, at this six, would be, yeah, this yeah. would be, yeah, yeah. So December 11th at 6.30. If there's no further discussion amongst the board members, the motion is before us. It's a roll call vote. Is there any further discussion amongst board members? Roll call, I vote aye. Ms. Parks? Uh, you need a second there. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I do. And I, second. can I get a second? second. Mr. Second. Greeny seconds the motion. Sorry, okay. thank you. Yep. Uh, I vote aye. Roll call vote. Thank you. Mr. Maxfield? Aye. Ms. O'Meara? Question. Do we need a vote to end the discussion? No, we don't. You don't have to have a, a previous question, but we, we had the discussion and nobody was, no people were talking. So we don't typically have a previous question vote. Did you want to say something more? Is that what it is? No, I. Okay, all right. And I shouldn't, and Mr. Green? Aye. Aye. The motion is unanimous, it carries. Uh, we're continued until December. Okay, I um, wanted to, ask um, whether we can reopen a public hearing. I'm not sure if we can, but when you continued the public hearing for Ms. Faye to March, yes. uh, we didn't say it at what time. Oh, I think we did. We Didn't oh, we have a discussion with Mr. Maxfield? No? Uh, it wasn't, oh, yeah, maybe. No, Oh, okay. A member of the public sent me an email alerting that we might not have said. I thought we. You know I what? Thought we had a first discussion we at six thirty. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's good. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Um, yeah. First time we talked about it, the motion was without a uh, without a time. But then Mr. Langsdale pointed out that we weren't okay. in a section, so that one didn't actually go through. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good memories. All right. Yep. Yep. We're in the good then, or, or in the clear. Okay. Ms. O'Meara. Can we just review when our next meetings are? <laughs> oh, sure. So, well, so Dece December 10th um, is the next meeting. Let's see here. Hold on a second. Uh, 10th, we won't be, unless you guys want to meet in December. Yeah. So December 10th, the following meeting would be December 24th. I assume that <laughs> folks wouldn't want to do that. So then the following meeting would be January 14th. Is that, is that right? January 14th? That's, well, you said the 10th. I thought I did say the 10th. Yeah. Oh, maybe I was looking at the wrong month. Oh, yeah, it is the 14th. It's the 14th. What's the 14th? Thursday, the January 14th. Yeah, we continued something and we wrote, yep. I wrote January 10th. Um, yeah, we continued something to January 10th. That was Pioneer Val, that was uh, Neil Mendenson's with yep. Bucky and. I have the ninth actually. I wrote it down. Let me go through all my notes. Uh, oh, goodness. Um, so on a Sunday. Sorry, I know, I know we're running late. I said the ninth, January 9th. That's oh, what I have you know what? Do you, guys, on a Saturday. do you guys do you guys mind meeting on a Wednesday? Wait, no, wait, wait I'm looking in the wrong month again. Oh, month. That's, yeah, the ninth oh, is a Sunday. Saturday. Yeah. Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. Saturday. Saturday. Oh, brother. All right. Okay. On so, a Saturday. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> uh, that would be fun. I I don't know what we're gonna I actually well, don't know. Oh God, I don't even know what, how we would even handle that. Um, we can, well, there's one way we can handle it. In the past we have, I know that I have- um, Oh, I know how we, you handle it. We conduct a pro forma meeting on that day. I, or one member of the board, I am, have done it in the past. We convene the board, we, we continue it on for 
it's for the simple purpose of continuing it to the next date. And we've done that a couple of times. So we can do that again. Actually, I know the formal way of handling that is re-advertising it. So uh, I'll confirm that with headquarters tomorrow. But okay. um, but uh, yeah, we would re-advertise it in the Daily Hampshire, Hampshire Gazette. And we would um, um, send out a uh, butters notice to all the butters. So sorry, just to so you guys can. Yeah. <laughs> that would be the 14th. Well, do you want to meet on January 7th, though? Because we will have missed December yeah. Uh, um, 24th. Yeah. Do you want to do it a little sooner? The so 7th? We can't, yeah, do it on the 7th. Uh, sure. January 7th works What's, for me. Yeah. There's, I feel like there's a lot. We've had one meeting and we'll have one meeting in December is all. Oh, goodness. All okay, right. Well, I'm really sorry about that. And I guess I'm really glad that we just discussed this. Uh, so then, um, do you still need to continue? Uh, Joan, are you satisfied with meetings for a little while? I will send out, um, uh, I have like a, a meeting uh, list um, for each year. So I haven't done it yet for 2021. So I'll send that out when that's ready. Okay. All right. Mr. Greeny. Mr. Greeny. So I'm, I'm curious is, um, since I have no experience with this, how the board will decide on the set of conditions. So uh, the public hearing is closed. It's, but, so, oh, yeah, okay. yeah. So it's, talk. No. Well, no, we can't discuss that. Yeah, it's okay. It's 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 Bob Greeny's first yes. CPA meeting as a sitting member, and you're doing a great job. Okay. Um, did you want to uh, see if there's any members of the public? Yep. The last, the last item on the agenda is public comment um, on matters that were not before the board tonight. So if there's any members of the public who wish to speak. I don't see anybody. I think they're all ready to go home. As are we. All right. Um, do I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Moved. Second. Second. Roll call vote. I vote unless there's any discussion. I vote aye. Ms. Parks? Aye. Ms. O'Meara? Aye. Mr. Maxfield? Aye. And Mr. Greeny? Aye. We're adjourned. Thank you all. And everybody. For a, a long meeting. <laughs>